Welcome to the American Nomad Podcast, hosted by the legend himself, or as I refer to him, the legend in his own mind, Rav Holly. Welcome everyone to the American Nomad Podcast. I am your host, the American Ra- the American Nomad Rav Holly. I'm super excited today because I do have another guest in the studio, and she's an old friend of mine. Uh, we go way back. We've spent lots of long days and nights on set together, and and uh, it's really good to have you in the studio today. So I just want to uh, thank you for driving all the way over here, and without further ado. This is my very good friend, DGA. <clears throat> She's in the Directors Guild. Alexis, how do I say your exact? Dvorak. Dvorak. It's the American version of it. Yes, it's Czech and, and difficult to pronounce. I think that's the way I usually pronounced it, but I was looking at it earlier going, oh my God, I should like go over that before, <laughs> that, and then yeah. I forgot to and then I forgot no. to go over it. It's fine. How's your sound? Does it sound, does it sound it good for you? It sounds great. Okay, I'm perfect. glad to be here. Thank you so much. So you were telling me that you've done some radio in college. I did. I did. I um, as close as I could really get to film a film degree in Nebraska, where I was going to school, was uh, broadcasting. So you did the TV side of that, and then the other side of that was the radio. Right. Um, and so yeah, I actually did. Oh gosh, I think four years total, two in undergraduate, and then my two-year graduate degree. I did radio just kind of for fun. Um, but I ended up actually winning. Like I got like a first place dj D, D, dg dj 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 yeah. Yeah. dj or you've been in the dj too long yeah, now. I i'm assistant director brain now but uh yeah i ended up winning a golden leaf for my show called the countdown um so yeah that was pretty cool oh you won that that's amazing yeah in the state yeah first in the state yeah for nebraska cool. mm-hmm. <clears throat> that doesn't say much but you know what it's something it is definitely <laughs> something so you and I worked on what was it 2014 the people versus RJ Simpson it was, yeah it was it was the fall of 2015 summer 15. fall of 2015 yeah <clears throat> I can never remember it just seems it seems like it was yesterday but it seems like it was it's a massive blur in my brain yeah. too because yeah. you were a DGA trainee at that time I was that was my first assignment as a DGA trainee I had been a PA before that right. but I came in and and that was my first trainee job and that was a brutal awakening into what that program was going right. to be because they I basically went, yeah. own you when oh I tell goodness. people like uh, yeah. you know you can't even you can't even go out of town without their permission and stuff <clears throat> and if they call you you got to be there you got to go right yes absolutely um, I even got written up once because you know they say you can't work um on a set at all and like you have to tell them exactly where you are all the time well i was volunteering on this it was just it wasn't even really a movie set it was just a set with james franco and seth rogan my friend who was working at called she said i know you work with big time actors come in and just you know kind of deal with them and make sure they're comfortable and it was for like middle school kids hadn't written the script and these guys were coming in to you know, make the script a real little film a little all oh, right nice. so the the program called me while i was at that set and it was rolling, and I said, hey, hold on a minute. I was whispering, I'm on set. Let me get off. And then I, there was no explaining at that point. I'm like, I'm volunteering. I'm not getting paid. Like, I know I didn't tell you, but I don't have to. This is my right. personal life here. And they didn't have, there was nothing to say about it. I got written up, and that was the end of it. Wow. Well, that's good. <laughs> it was really effective. Right. The uh, it's a For people that don't know, it's a very prestigious thing to get chosen for, though, because there's so many people fighting for those spots. Is it like a lottery system is how they do it or? No, it's like a it's it's like a three point system that you have to go through. Um, So I believe there was like 600 and some people who applied the year that I got in and there was only 10 of us chosen. So I think it's like it's like one point six percent is like is what it ended up being. Um, But the first thing is you have to do a written application, which is like 10 pages of work history um, and like four or five handwritten essays. And if you even tick one box wrong, they automatically throw throw it out. Right. Um, So, yeah. And the second one is like a big assessment center. They take you into groups and they have you problem solve in groups as they watch you solve these problems. Um, And then if you finally get past that round, then the third and final round is a stress test, stress interview, where they line up a panel of 
the board of the training program basically across from you, kind of like we are here. And the idea is to get more than you can keep in your periphery, basically. So you can't, so they're firing questions at you rapid style, kind of like a congressional hearing really wow. is what it is. And um, you, it's supposed to stress you out because you want to maintain eye contact with them. But I can't see this person on my right. I have to turn and then I can't see this person over here. Wow. So you have to maintain your cool in that scenario. So basically it's just teaching you to keep your composure under pressure. They want to yeah. see that if you can problem solve and if you can do it with a level head, basically, yeah. That's crazy. The But the, the beneficial side of that is you get to basically just leapfrog past doing what is it 600 pa days to get in the guild it's 600 pa days you got a 50 out of town 400 well 600 pa days right. just straight and then 400 non-union ad days but yeah. third area so right. you have to go to uh, atlanta right. louisiana miami wherever that's not here and get those right which is usually the hardest part for people to do is getting booking the out-of-town gigs because you're not working in those those areas in that market yeah yeah <clears throat> it, it essentially took me two and a half years to get into the dga for those people who have to go the long way it takes about nine years yeah, on average right which is crazy it's, it's madness they need to they do really need to rethink i think and i think a lot of other members think this too is how they allow third area people to get into the guild or to work in town like i don't see a problem with certain third area ADs being able to work additional AD jobs, you know, maybe not second, second, but additional AD jobs. Right. I could see that, you know. Yeah, because once you're in the guild, you can't do anything that's not union as well. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I know some people who do on occasion, but it's a it's under too. table yeah. type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know a first AD, no names, not going to mention any names, but I know a first AD that did an indie film, but <clears throat> they listed him as I get him like a producer or something. But he first AD'd it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that, there's a way to get under the yeah. table in there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he couldn't be listed as a first AD because, mm -hmm. yeah, he's been in the guild. But he was like an EP. They listed him as like a co-EP or something. But he was first AD in the whole thing. So it actually worked out. But it was a nightmare of a freaking movie. Yeah, I and, bet. And then we never got paid. That's the one I never got paid for. Yeah, I don't miss the independent movie days. Yeah. Those were wild times and just rife with people taking advantage of other people. And then um, and then you get the people that are the higher ups or above the line. Even the, the regular, the director, the, the ADs and stuff don't even understand because they've never done anything but indie. They don't even understand that, like, the PAs and stuff don't work like that on, like, union, big union gigs and shows. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because the PAs on an indie film are just like PAs on a commercial. You yeah. know, they're they're taking care of crafty and stocking coolers and picking up trash and cleaning up the set after the end of the day. Yeah. Which is all stuff that no PA does on a big budget union. You can't even do that. That's crafty's job. You get yelled at it for doing it, yeah. which is crazy. And uh, it's crazy how many people that have years of experience in the indie and they have no idea that P that that's the PAs don't do that stuff in, in the union world. Yeah, I was I was lucky enough that when I was PAing, I was kind of bouncing back and forth between um, union stuff and non-union stuff as a PA. And so, yeah, when I would go to those non-union sets and yeah see that stuff, I'd be like, oh, man, I know how this should work. And this is so much more pa painful yeah. because... I know how it can be. <laughs> yep. And, you know, just like uh, that indie, like a couple of indie films I've done as a second second. And you're just on your own doing everything because the PAs have no idea. You don't have a first team PA. You don't have a, a background PA. So it's like you're trying to get cast ready and the first AD is yelling at you to be on set. It's like it yeah. can't be two places at once do you want me to get your cast ready or do you want to be on set and some of your ad's may not know what's going on either and that's that, and that that's makes another it, painful yeah. truth yeah, that makes it even worse yeah the couple of the couple of movies that i did like that i told the i told him i'm like if you want me to stay then you got to let me run the pas because i'm the second second that's my that's you know i said in the union world that's my world mm -hmm. so let me have the pas I'll pick one to be a first team PA. I'll pick one to work with a BG and I'll get, you know, get one of them that can help me get the cast ready and, and stuff like that. That's what I did. And it, it 
wasn't ideal, but it worked a lot better. Yeah. And I just explained to them, you know, the PAs, because they didn't know what was going. I'm like, look, like if you ever get to move up into scripted TV or big budget union films and stuff like that, you this is the way they do it. It's yeah. not it's not filling up coolers or setting up tables and breaking down tables for lunch. You don't do any of that. But everybody's got their designated world. So Yeah, and that really, it breaks down into being a good manager and breaking down your team, you know, kind of being like an octopus and knowing where all of your 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 tentacles are specifically and if you have one person on background then you know who's responsible for that one person on first team they know who's responsible for that you don't have the madness of well where is this actor okay well nobody knows because nobody was put on first team exactly because there is nobody for first team it's uh it literally drives me crazy because like you know i've worked on a few you know uh, i'm not gonna i guess i could uh you know, they were pretty good. They were big actors. They list actors, you know what I mean? And it had a decent budget, but everything was just such a cluster because everything, everybody that was there were, was brought in from the commercial world, mm-hmm. except for the craft services. The craft services on that movie was the only thing that n- the only people that knew what they were doing. Everybody else came in from the commercial world, everybody. Mm-hmm. So the director was screaming at everybody and it was called uh Torrance with Ben Affleck. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and it was a freaking. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, it was a nightmare. And then I can't remember exactly what happened, but it was something like the PAs were grabbing like the, they were grabbing like some of the grips equipment or something, and I guess the grips weren't down. You know, I mean, you can do that on a when it's not union, but you, you know, yeah. I think some of those grips had worked in the union world and. Yeah, they were like flipping out because the PAs were picking, moving out their Apple boxes. And, you know, the director came out, that stuff's got to go away. And the PAs all run over there and just started moving equipment. And yeah, yeah it all hit the fan. Well, I, it's interesting. And I'm like, I think we might have had one of our video people from Tacoma. Yeah, I've been over there for three seasons now. Um, and on our first, I think it was. Our, where are you, no, where are you guys season. shooting that at? Woodland Hills. I know we can we what? make it look like Washington. I know. I know, but yeah, Woodland Hills. I can see that, but the uh, for the for the outside stuff. But what lot are you guys on? No, there's no lot there. We built. We took an old manufacturing mm-hmm. warehouse basically and just built a firehouse on the inside of it. And oh, we've okay. kind of over the seasons have encompassed more and more of the buildings around us to make um, offices and. It's and not the it's not like the that. one up in Sun City or whatever, is it? No, huh? You no, ever we're been up more there? West. I think that's like Sun Valley, like Sun that Valley. Yeah, there's like a now. there's a stage up there that used to be an old carpet or an old furniture factory oh, or manufacturing be. facility. That's where they shot anger management when oh, Charlie really? Sheen had the meltdown after three oh. men or two and a half men or whatever. I gotcha. Yeah, and they come up with the anger management, so they did that. And then I worked. Sarah Oliver got me on over there on Jim Carrey's where he was like being like a Are you kidding. Yeah, kidding. Yeah, I did yeah. a couple of days over there. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I did. Mm-hmm. So, no, wait a minute. That but was, that was the, no, that was, that was at North Hollywood. Yeah. That's the Sons of Anarchy. It's too many, too many stages. Yeah, the Crazy X yeah. stage too. That oh, was yeah, there. Crazy X. So, no, I'm getting it mixed up. So, the Sun City was where I did Dear White People. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy because, like I said, it was an old furniture manufacturing plant. So the ceilings weren't that high. Well, the one in North Hollywood aren't either. No, no, it's it's literally it's not really meant to be. Yeah, it's a not really a stage. Yeah, but, but it, they it just works for what it, we want. And turned our, it into one. Exactly. Our showrunner and creator, and director, like first team actor, he lives seven minutes from that place. Like oh, we're never so he gonna, loves it. Yeah, exactly, we're never yeah, gonna move. It. We're gonna be there. You know. Yeah. So the the dear white people that sound stage or that stay it's not really a sound stage. So there's like a big roll up door where the lunchroom is. So. They'll make they get the lunch ready while crew's still working, and then when they break, when you break for lunch, you go to where the lunch is ready, and everything's covered with flies. I wouldn't even eat the food. Hardly. Oh, really? Yeah, it was disgusting. Because they have this big roll-up door that they keep the door open, so when or so the, because there's no air conditioning. Oh yeah, yeah. it's just those little roller yeah, units. Yeah, so they have those yeah, big roller not, fans, yeah. and so they're pulling air through the building to try to you know keep the heat to exhaust the heat. It's just it was a nightmare. I mean, we had the portables. So like uh, the build outs on set, like if mm-hmm. there was going to, if we were going to be working on one set, that was a, you know, we'd push those freaking air conditioners and hook them up and cool, get the set cool. 
Yeah. But it was a it was a disaster. And I kind of think that's the way it's gonna you know be. I think that's you know Paramount and Fox and all that. They're pretty expensive to rent those stages out, and some of these you know new streaming shows can be made for little to no money, but they yeah. sure can't afford a stage at Paramount. So they're gonna find these manufacturing yep. places. They're gonna cut them out. And they're going to bring in those little movable air conditioning units, yep. and that's what you're going to have. That's a scary thought. But So when I did Dear White People, that was uh, Netflix. But it is crazy to see how far Netflix has come in that time, because I think Dear White People was 2015 or 20. No, it had been later than that, 2017. So 17, and now I just did, after Ryan Murphy got on, Three three hundred fifty million dollar deal to go to Netflix. I did Hollywood, mm-hmm. and we did that. Oh, that and yeah. the mm-hmm. days I was on that, it, we did that on the Paramount lot, and we had all the money in the world to do whatever we wanted to do with. But when I was on Dear White People, I mean, you had to like it was like pulling teeth to get them to buy ink pens. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they had no budget. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And and and, and uh, now there was. That was the, I keep getting kidding, the kidding, because at the kidding stage, no, no, no. That was it, somewhere else. I was there, too, <clears> and I can't remember where that was now. I think it, no, it was the kidding stage, because I think the kidding stage was the one that had the Hulu show as well that it sh- that shot there, but they were off, but all their stuff was all wrapped up on the same stage. Was no. that the kidding stage? Could be. I don't, I don't remember. remember that specifically, yeah. but it's possible. There's so many stupid random shows. I know. <laughs> how long did, did how, how long were you on Brooklyn Nine Nine? That looked like a pretty fun show. I just day played it on it for a few days that you got me over there. I was over there for oh gosh, half the season maybe, three quarters of that season, um, 2016. So whatever season that was, I don't remember. There's been so many, um, but yeah, it was fun. It was um, it's three cameras, no waiting. So yeah, like yeah. I came from the background world of you know for those people who don't know, like the Ryan Murphy world and the hour long dramas, you have probably 25 to 30 minutes to set your background because it's going to be a very specific background look um and it's only two cameras and you know exactly what the angles are and then i went over to brooklyn 99 and i had seven and a half minutes to walk to a separate stage and get your background 30 background come back and then set them all and then here we go that was that was a hard learning curve for me over did there. they have a back? Did you have a background PA holding with the background? It was me. That was, it was it. Yeah, I I would literally be running, sprinting across the CBS lot to get to them and bring them back. Yeah, and they are just the sweetest people. I love those background. They are very nice and intelligent and um, professional background. But yeah, that was madness. Why would they not have you a BGPA or a Wrangler or somebody to help you? Because we were on stage and oh, it's a small yeah. show and, you know, you 25 background. Oh, what okay. is that? But you. it's yeah. just, you know, they just, there was nowhere to really s- stage them gotcha. on that stage. So that you would have to, you would have to go a ways away. Gotcha. Um, just, a, just an unfortunate set of circumstances, but it was good. It was a fun show. Um, a really funny, like writing staff. Yeah. They are really, really on it over there. The days that I did it, we uh, we turned the ambulance over, blew the ambulance up, and oh, that, nice. that went awry. Do you remember that? N- no, maybe. The stunt guy, uh, it was when we turned over the, the NYPD van, um, and the stunt driver hit the ramp. He was supposed to hit it at 30 miles an hour, and he well, hit it like at 55. Were we on location that day? Kind of no, like... we were on the Paramount lot. Were you? On New York Street. Oh, yes. I do remember that now. Yeah. Okay, and, yes. And the whole van slid all the way to where a, a camera was sitting. Yep. And they had to grab camera and, and scramble. I do remember that. And they yeah. had a black magic camera that was inside that, uh, you know, the, the it looked like the concrete, you know, barriers that are on the highway mm-hmm. that they had built. It was all made of like plaster and then it was a steel frame on the inside of it, but it looked like a big concrete barrier block and that's what they hit for the ramp. And they had a black magic camera that was like a four or five thousand dollar camera in that thing and, and it got destroyed. I, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. The, it's it's amazing. It's amazing when, you know, people are at home and watching these stunts um, and when they work, they're wonderful and they're a beautiful thing. Um, but they do take a lot of preparation and a lot of safety going into them, and they can absolutely go wrong. And I they, mean, they do go awry from time they to time. They do, yeah. yeah and, l- and luckily enough, nobody was hurt, nobody was injured in oh, that. Yeah. But you know, a camera, yeah, you know, hundred thousand yeah. dollar camera, yeah, yeah. that's they, not nothing, you know. I wonder. I know they insure, but I don't think they're. They, I don't know how that would work. 
I know everything's yeah. usually rental packages, but I just I just wonder how like when you just wonder how that works. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar. I've had to talk to a producer about exactly what the stipulations are for if we're doing a stunt. If I blow up this camera, you know, what, what do I get back from yeah. that? You know, yeah, because it does happen. Do you know the Do you know the story of like all the all the dollies, like the camera dollies, the big camera dollies, like the big four wheel? No, I don't think so. You can't buy those things. None of the studios own them. They're all rented. There's mm-hmm. a company that rents them that builds them. And oh, so you exclusively. Could, so yeah, you, you can only rent them. You can't buy them. Interesting. And they're you know they're like a hundred grand too, but or fifty to a hundred grand. But yeah, I had no idea either. But when I was doing a, a music video. We wanted a couple of them, and so I was like, well, let's just see if we can find some old ones, you know, on Craigslist or something, and, you know, we'll just buy them, and, you know, if they need some parts or whatever, we'll fix them up or get them working, and we started looking for them on the used market, and there were none, so I contacted a couple of people, and I'm like, do you know where we could get, like, a couple old camera dollies, and they're like, what, and then they're <laughs> like, no, you can't buy those things. You it's, have to rent. You have to rent those because you can just go to a rental house and rent them, but you got to have like however much money it is to, you know, Hmm. put down as a deposit. I'm kind of surprised somebody hasn't picked up the technology and started to market that, you know, in a different way. Well, I'm sure there's more than one company, but I think here in L.A. there's like one company that's like in charge of they manufacture them and they rent them. Yeah. It's a pretty that's a way to do it. It's actually pretty smart. Yeah. And, you know, I'm telling you that because it was passed down to me it could be completely bull crap when i'd stop <laughs> thinking about it I'll but ask. it makes sense it yeah. makes sense next yeah. time i'm yeah. on set i'll ask the dolly grip if yeah. that's the case yeah because yeah. that's exactly what i heard that you could not buy those things you could only rent them which is kind of crazy because you would think you know these big studio lots would have them but no they can't they don't have them either yeah, in-house right. yeah exactly well and i'm it doesn't surprise me that you can only rent them, but I, it does surprise me that there's not separate companies out there that sell them yeah, specifically. Exactly. Like, like for instance, my wife does camera, so she has two camera cards and certain yep. camera equipment that she buys on her own, and then that's included in her kit rental on the show that she's on if they're going to use it. Um, so I would assume that would be the way it was with dollies as well, but apparently right. not. Well, cameras, everything, you know, they rent everything pretty much, but yeah, with the dollies, it, you know, like... Uh, like another thing, you can't like go to like the regular regular rental houses and get the dollies. You got to go to this this one company that that rents them. Evidently, yeah, that's well, what I heard. They're making bank, man. They're killing it. So, how long did you meet your wife on OJ? Where, where was she at? I met my wife on Kingdom, which Kingdom. is that MMA show oh, with yeah, 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 yeah. Frank Grillo, yeah, yeah, Nick yeah. Jonas, uh, yeah. Tucker. Yeah, because I've worked with her too. But I don't remember where. Nine one one. Oh, was it nine one one? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, that's one right. Over there, yeah. That's right. She did season yeah, one. Yeah, I, I told, was on there. I texted you. I said she's over there. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah, tap yeah, her yeah. on the shoulder, and you did. You yeah, really yeah. freaked her out. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, God, you have eyes everywhere, and I'm like, I do. Yeah, because she. Yeah, uh, that was actually funny because uh, she's very, you know, like all the, the camera ops. She's very in the moment of like, you know, sh- she's just in her moment of what she's doing she's just concentrating on what she's doing then here comes this freaking comes me like tapping her on the shoulder like hey alexis told me to tell you hi. <laughs> yeah it, it works both ways she was like what yeah exactly she she was weirded out by that and then i was over on the orville here last year or two years ago now and that whole camera department she knew so she had texted them and they showed up while I was, I wasn't at the AD trailer, but the ADs told me later, they're like, um, the whole camera department's looking for you. And I'm like, wait, who? And they're like, the whole, whole department. Camera? Wow. <laughs> oh, you were on Orville? Uh, I did a couple days over there. Yeah. I can't remember when now. It was before COVID, just before COVID. I'm not sure that I didn't get an early case of COVID off of the Orville. Well, you know, that's so funny because I was talking to somebody yesterday and they were saying... No, that was that was Westworld. That Westworld's really gotten hit bad. With I heard scene. that. I heard yeah. that recently. Yes. I didn't know that because that was my last show was Westworld. Because mm-hmm. I got they kept. I don't know how they even. You know how it works. I don't even know how they got my name. But when I was on nine one one, I wasn't staff, but I put in probably 60 days as mm-hmm. an everyday day player you know how that works yeah and because uh, i knew what i was doing and if me and nicole could you know get along everything was smooth uh, but you know so and i just was going along there going along there and then me and nicole got they became like so 
Yeah, I was like, I got to get off the show. And uh, but Westworld, it kept somebody over there kept texting me and texting me and texting me like, hey, Rev, are you available? We'd really love to have you over here. Are you available? We'd really have you over here. And I was thinking to myself, you know, these guys are kind of like my family on 911. I know them. I've done like the pilot all the way, you know, so I don't want to go starting over where nobody knows me. <clears throat> but then after one night on a blow up over an overnight, I was standing there and the prop master came up and he goes, Rav, he goes like, why do you, he goes, you're not even a staff. Like, why do you like putting up with that? And I was like, you know, you're right. And they had texted me earlier and I was like, you know, yeah, I'm on. And it was so funny because, uh, my God, who was the second? I can't remember his name. It starts with a C. He's a black guy. Just, oh, just right. the sweetest yes. guy. I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name. I want to say Carter, but it's not that. But it, they call him just, it's like a first name, but it's his last name. What is his name? I could find an old call sheet. But anyway, he had already put me on the call sheet. He didn't, he always asked, like, right, you on the mar, you on the mar, you know? And then he just took it that I was. And I was like, dude, the, the prelim come out. And I was like, oh, man, I'm not on the mar. I'm on Westworld. He's like, what? He goes, oh, no. I was like, yeah, sorry. And then I went to Westworld and got over there and I was like, because everybody that I talked to that had been on Westworld, like the first season or two was talking about like, it was worse than horror story. It was just the biggest nightmare, a lot of work, but dude, it was just so chill. I loved it. Oh, good. Yeah. I've heard it's a lot of like desert style, yeah, like yeah, out in the heat yeah. of the day. That, that kind downtown of stuff. LA, yeah. there's downtown LA stuff, and then it shoots on the LA Center Center Studio lots, which oh, really? is not the nicest lot in the world. You know, you know where that did, is? Yeah, we just did, I did the Lakers project over there. Okay, yeah. It was funny because as soon as I'm, and it was really you remember Bryce, a camera. Oh his, yeah, yeah. I, tall forget, Bryce. Who can yeah. forget Bryce? <laughs> so I was, we, he was on nine one one. You know what yeah. I mean? I worked with him. We worked with him on OJ and then I saw him on horror story some, and then he was a staff camera op on nine one one. And, um, I went over, I left <clears throat> and went over to Westworld. I'm walking onto Westworld and I see Bryce setting up camera. Oh really? And was, he was over there. I was like, interesting dude what are you doing follow me around i was like are you on this now he's like yeah i was like we left at the same time we'd been on 911 he was a staff on 911 yeah, so i don't he know went over to do that yeah so interesting. and it happened at the exact same time and then it was so weird because we're working on 911 and we're shooting on the back of our lot and they're setting all of these wrecked cars mm -hmm. and i'm like what are they doing and it was they were setting a scene for 911 to shoot on the freaking lot there at right uh, there. center stage yeah it was weird weird so how do you feel about so this has been your first time back here since covid right so how do you feel now about the world that you're now in because i've been working in you know the industry since we came back here you know yeah, september -ish. Did, oh september yeah it was wow. when i finally got back into the i got a couple offers before then but i wasn't super comfortable with where we were right in the world at that point and i didn't need to work so i wasn't going to um and so, yeah, so how do you feel about it now? Because it's a different world. Well, it's funny that they're, you know, just for PAs, they're paying way more money now. You know what I mean? Good. Which it was, I was really surprised by that. Um, it's funny because as, you know, as weird as it is about the regimented stuff, you know what I mean? Like, you know the first team PA making those calls on the radio, the BG PA making those calls on the radio. I don't like that stuff not being done. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It bugs me. Yeah. Uh, because I know that that's the protocol and I know those PAs don't know how to do it. So it's just going to get lost. So I like, I, I don't, I miss that stuff. You know what I mean? Even though it can be like redundant or monotonous and stuff, you know, listen, hearing, hearing the first team PA go, you know, uh, first team's walking, well, for, yeah. well, first team's walking, first team's landing, you know, yeah. invited and all that stuff. But I like it because that lets me know in my head everything. I know what's going on. I know where the first team is. I, you know what I mean? It just keeps. And when that stuff isn't happening, it just seems to me like everything's just kind of floating. Does yeah. that make sense? It's more, mil it's kind of mil military, you know, the way we do things when it's, you know, when it's really done right. But there's reasons that you do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you first, when you're green, you don't understand it. You're like, well, they tell them, you know, what do you got to tell them that you're walking with a cast? That doesn't make sense. Or, you know, like touches are happening or, you know, uh, 
Kenny's in the chair, you know, yeah. I get Kenny's going through the works. Kenny's a hundred percent, you know, all that stuff means something. And I didn't hear any of that yesterday. Yeah. None, nothing. Yeah. And the first ADs that I know would be ripping people apart because they wouldn't let them know, you know, or they would be like, you know, what's going on with my cast? Is my cast getting ready? You know, it's something to be said, like has cast been through costumes or anything, but it was, but on the flip side of that, because I knew what was going on, I was able to, and then we had a very, um, Aaron, he was a base camp PA and he's very experienced. So he run base camp. And, you know, he's basically an AD as well, mm -hmm. but just a, he just uh, doesn't have all of his days yet, but he knew exactly what was going on. So he could help the first team PA help get cast. He was getting cast. They were, you know, as a team to where it was, it actually happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, then I was helping out everywhere that I needed to fill in if something wasn't happening. You know what I mean? I'd go to, I was pretty much just working as a key set. Yeah. It's interesting to see, like, I, you say that the PAs are gone because a lot of them left. And I've, I've seen there's a lot of work in town so that the, the veteran PAs are all staffed up right now. So we're having to pull in a lot of green PAs from nowhere. I've also noticed in the background, there's a lot of cancels. So if you want 300 background on one day, you're going to have to ask for 400 because you're probably going to get between 50 to 70 cancels. Um, and just no shows. They're going to go for the COVID test and then they're not going to come to work that next day. And I wonder if there's been a, this dynamic shift in how we s perceive the work that we do and whether it's worth it or not, particularly at like a PA level or a background level, like an entry level position. Because I think, some, like you said, some of these people who have gone and left the state or left the industry, I don't think, you know, having been through a year of COVID, I think maybe priorities have changed. A yeah. little bit, which is interesting. It was it was crazy yesterday because the background showed up at, I think there was like maybe 25 of them, and they showed up at 7 a.m. and weren't supposed to be there to like 8.30, and there was like a mix-up in the call, and it was on central casting. It wasn't on us, but mm. then they were pissed, you know, and it was a weird deal, and I was talking to the second second, John, and he was saying that, you know, central casting is not what it used to be after the whole pandemic they're thing. all they're all still working from home so everything is very disjointed over there yeah they like it's very difficult to get a hold of them if you have people who are missing or people who have canceled it's because yeah they're just not back in their offices and so that has definitely taken a toll on the quality of what they produce for sure and what's going on let's take a quick break we're 30 minutes in and i forgot to do like a sound check the test did we do a sound check to test the mics i don't think so i don't think so yeah i was checking so i just want to make sure that we've been recording recording <laughs> okay great we're gonna take a quick break we'll be right back <laughs>
right, guys, we took a quick intermission there because I had a I had a freak out moment because I forgot to do like a sound check to make sure we were getting sound on the mics. I was having like a little issue uh, with the intro not being able to hear it. So then we were sitting here talking and I went, oh, my God, what if you can't hear the mic? So okay. what, like, what if we're doing this all just because we're having a conversation? <laughs> I mean, at least we spoke. We were having know? some great conversation, too, yeah, though, because yeah. I was thinking like all of these nuggets, you know, for the films the film stuff i mean some people find that interesting if they're trying to get into the film industry yeah. well if they're trying to get into the film industry now is a good time to come out because town is so busy and we are definitely looking for pas and that's how you do it you you know you start out green and we'll work with you until you you know get to be like rob here you know? <laughs> that's uh and that is so true because like right now people are so it's so hard for everybody to to, to staff up a show which is so weird Cause used to, you know, it was, um, uh, it was right. The opposite. It was, there was too many people to fill your position. You were always fighting to try to get on a show or even day play. You know what I mean? And, you know, I've been on shows where I would get on, everybody would love me. I would day play for two weeks and all of a sudden they would just rotate the day players out to rotate other day, new day players in, you know? So you would just be like one day you're unemployed. I mean, one day you're employed, the next day you're unemployed. Yeah. You've day play, you know, it's the same yes. with ADs too. Yeah. Well, yes. And, and uh, over the last year, I sort of attribute it to, to sort of being new in the AD world versus now being three seasons in as a second second. Like my phone continuously rings now. I'm turning down jobs now. But like, you know, two years ago, that was not the case. I right. was having to hustle for, you know, work. And that's just kind of how it is. Right. You know? Have you done any music videos? Did I ever do music videos? I don't think so. I don't think I ever did a music video. Because that's basically what I've been doing the entire... I did a commercial for America's Got Talent. I did a couple commercials, one for Target. But most of what I've been doing is music videos. I did Bella Thorne's last two music videos. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 if I could just do that, I'd be set. You know, there's a lot of money to be made in the commercial world. Yeah. Um, the, I know several... Um, non-union first cities who do just primar primarily commercials and like music videos and they make a killing doing yeah. it and if that's what they want to do that's great you yeah. know i mean the rate the day rate is not near as good as like a a guild you know but i mean like uh, the last music video i did was 600 bucks a day so yeah I mean, well, I'll and complain it's, it's about not that. the commitment either. Like, you know, oh, work, yeah. if you're on a film or a TV show, that's like a nine month commitment. Yeah. And if you don't want to do that, if you want to earn a quick, a decent amount of yeah. money, then a music video is a perfect, perfect way to thing. do that. Yeah. What I like about it is, you know, it gives me a couple of, you know, two or four days on set a month, it gives me enough money to do this and other things, you know, because I don't want to just do that. It's yeah. not, it's not my career. I know it's your career, but it's not my career career. Yeah. One time I thought it was going to be, but then, <laughs> but then I started doing it and I was like, I understand why first ADs like they're, what is it like 57 or something like that? Yeah, it's like it's mid fifties like, is the life expectancy. Yeah. The first AD. Cause you just, you, people don't understand it. It's weird. And then the other thing is, so I day played yesterday on nine one one and we were on stage and then I day played and I was just on second unit. So they, they're staffing up a second unit because mm -hmm. they're running behind and so but then i day played uh tuesday on nine one one, and we were at the firehouse which i've been there many many times mm -hmm. but it was completely two different two different things like even the second ad everybody was different yeah you know what i mean it's like everybody changed the whole crew changed over but it was still seconds unit it was just weird yeah i, I could see that you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, uh, so, cause I was talking to the second AD Brad and he messaged me and then, but he didn't even know that I was working on nine one one. next day. Uh, yeah. He had no idea. So when I was talking to Brad, I was uh, under the impression that he knew I was on set at the firehouse. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he had no idea. That's wild. It was just weird. And then I got to set on at the firehouse and on the call sheet, I was listed as key set. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is pretty much all I want to do now is if I'm going to PA. And um, Fox doesn't have key set PA. So I was like, well, that's cool. You know, or that's, but then, and then yesterday there's no, you know, I ended up pretty much being the key set, but there was no designated key set, which is the way Fox has always been. They yeah. never listed a key set. That's why like on OJ, Rachel and Brittany and 
Uh, what's the other girl's name that was the first team with the glasses? Oh, there was Ashley was over there. Um, not, not little Ashley. She was the bigger girl with the glasses. Oh, oh, D. D. Yeah, yeah D. And D, so it, was, it wasn't really Ashley. It was D, Brittany, Rachel, and uh, oh, the little brunette. Uh, I can't think of her name. I've blacked a lot of this out of my yeah. memory. She, anyway, they were basically fighting over who was the, you know, they all thought they were the key oh, set geez. PA. Yeah. So it always, it was, it was all this political stuff going on at that time. And Rachel, I always felt like she was the most experienced. And so she I guess should've... I always assumed she was. She was yeah. running first team. Yeah. So I assumed that was the deal. Well, I thought it was, I thought it was D that was running first team. Mm -mm, it was Rachel. It was Rachel. Because mm -hmm. hmm. I remember D like yelling at me because I called uh, last looks. She was, okay, so on the Ryan Murphy stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say this as politically correct as I can, um, the hair and makeup folks are very talented and very sensitive people. Right. Um, a lot of times, especially on like horror story or crime story or what, what have you, they will give them their own PA. Like, did you ever meet um, oh, that Carlos makes sense. and... Yeah, yeah. yeah and, uh, and his boyfriend. His, yeah. Husband, oh, what's his... Boyfriend, partner. Um uh, what's his name? He's the sweetest man, and yeah, I'm got, like, blanking accent. on him. Oh, yeah, we we worked on horror, horror story. We worked They're, on nine one one. They literally they come in just to work with yeah. the hair and makeup yeah. team, just that because they just need a little extra love yeah. and help. And on then some and of these Ryan shows. really likes. Uh, well, Carlos is a great guy. I love Carlos to death. What is his boyfriend's name? Starts with a V, doesn't it? It's not Victor though, no. but it's uh. We're still Facebook friends. Was it Vinny? No, no it, that's close. Yeah. I can't believe I can't remember his name. I mean, I've spent, I don't know how many days on set because we worked. A, I remember I felt so bad for him because. Vito. 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 Vito yeah. Go. Vito. Uh, Nicole would always have him designated to do breakfast orders. And I've never seen like, I, that was always weird. I've never seen just them having somebody designated to do, to do breakfast orders. Like that's literally all he would do every morning was just. That can happen, especially if there's a orders. big cast yeah. and if they have particular, you know, food sensitivities and stuff. Yeah, yeah they, we'll, we will bring in a PA specifically just yeah. for breakfast orders, and then they that PA will roll into other utility work throughout yeah, yeah. the day. Well, this well, but this was just for the crew, mostly for the crew and the staff. But he did it every single morning. You know. Usually, like a PO will get designated, though mm -hmm. you'll show up and I'll be like, "Hey, Rav, you're going to do breakfast orders this morning." Okay, yeah. now Vito was coming in and he would just every morning do breakfast orders. So, because what had happened was he was working doing breakfast orders and there was something else going on, and I pulled him off to go do something else, and I was immediately let know that Vito's there to do breakfast orders. Don't be pulling him off breakfast orders because that's all he's there to do. I was like, "Oh, I, okay, I didn't get it." Yeah. yeah. And Carlos wasn't on that at that time. He was over on, uh, he was doing American Crime Story Versace at that time. Mm -hmm. But Vito was us with us on Horror Story doing breakfast orders. And then he was on 911 doing breakfast orders. So I don't know how that all worked out or what, how it worked, but you know, it's whatever. I didn't care. I mean, I love Carlos. He's a, or uh, Vito. Both of them. They're such good guys. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, you know, they know how to maneuver that world. That's a very particular yeah. world. And so, yeah, whenever I get on a show with them and I, they're both there, I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, go let to them. you, Carlos or Vita, whatever, yeah. whatever you guys need, you let me know because you guys know this way better than I do. And just let them do what they do because yes. they know what they're doing, which yeah. is a great thing. Carlos is a great first team PA. Like he's so on top. Have you worked with him when he's a first team? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's just so on top of it. Like he knows that like, nobody's business nobody's business I, I remember on feud he was the first team pa on feud and this girl came in and she was pining for carlos's job and she was asking me about carlos and does he really know what he's doing his first team pa i said honey i said you just sort of you need to let that thought go right out because that you'll carlos will be here until this, yeah. Unless he wants to leave, he'll be here until this show wraps. He'll yeah. never, they'll, he'll never go anywhere because nobody knows. Yeah, Carlos is the on top of like it. He does, yeah. yeah, nobody knows it like he does. Yeah, and he's so efficient at it, which is so nice because then you don't have to listen to, you don't have to listen to the first AD screaming at the first team PA because you know the first 
Team PA hasn't got the cast wired or, you know, the cast is hanging out in crafty and sitting in wired and, you know, you have all yeah. that kind of, you know how that works. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been there a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like on, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but like on 911 or like on Horror Story and 911, both of the first team PAs who were pretty, pretty good first team PAs, the first AD made them cry and they both quit. Danny was yeah. one, and then the other one was Fong. Her sister is, uh, their dad's like the famous director that created Final Destination. Oh, and, really? Yeah. What's, yeah. What was I, her name? I can't remember her name. I don't understand or really, you know, obviously don't get behind that management style because it is like 80s were managers and yeah. we have to, you know, take care of control of the set. But there's no need to pass down like that sort of an attitude, particularly to the lowest paid person on the crew who's probably doing more of the work than they should be. Yeah. Um, for what so they're getting paid. I always, yep. I, I, I just know another PA who left um, a different time. I'm not going to name names again because that could get weird. But he left this show because the second second was verbally abusive yeah. to him. And I know I, and I know that to be true because this second second also was verbally abusive to me yeah. when I was a trainee. So it's like gotcha. this is just a cycle that continues. And I think it has been getting better, you know, over the years with more like the Me Too movement and right. a lot of the woke woke right. Hollywood, you yeah. know, like this is it. We're, there's a lot of people. It's funny because I f- I fight a lot no of that more. stuff, but then a lot know? of and this this instance this is part it's of good. it too. Yeah. And this is a good this is a good version right. of it. You know, I kind of I kind of subscribe to the Bill Maher. You know, like the woke right. left is is a lot of BS, um, and it, this cancel culture is yeah. a lot of BS. But in this scenario, this it, is a positive move forward. Um, for a workplace because you can can you imagine like working in an office somewhere and your office manager is cussing you out in the middle of the the cubicles there around everyone or screaming and screaming at you in front of yeah, everybody or right like, like that's what happens oh, on I know. set people and don't know this that's though. not and yeah. that's not an acceptable way to, that you would you know if you were in an office building and that happened this yeah, person be would be an hr yeah that'd be that an would an be HR. the end of it hr would have a converse, conversation with them giving them you know since you're getting fired you're not getting a severance you're just yeah, out exactly and that's not how hollywood yeah. works well, it it has been though. It has been so. It's like I was telling one of the green PAs yesterday. I was like, so, because I was because she's never worked. She's she was really good, but she's never worked um, in in non in the non COVID world. So I was kind of letting her know. I said, you know, it's changed, but I said back, you know, I said when I say like back in the day, I mean like back in the day, like three years ago. Yeah, like three years ago. I mean, you would find, you would find it would fluctuate some, but your first ADs were always dicks pushing the crew, you know, most of the time they, they, they're the same. You could leave one production, you could leave Fox and go over to Paramount to work on a different show. The first, they're the same. The first ADs, they all have this cadence and this, this attitude, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, like I'll go to like NCS uh, LA where it's like this cool hip girl that's the first ad that's like 34 years old and she's sprinting down the street you know checking the picture cars to make sure everything's ready instead of yelling at pas to get down there you know yeah. what i mean to lock that up yeah and, and then, i was just yeah. like in the end that the craziest thing is i got over there on that show just day playing for some days and we didn't even have lights because oh that show God. was so efficient yeah we were we it was like 4:45, and this is like winter time when I was working. It's like 4:45, and, it and I'm going. It's going to get dark at six o'clock, and yeah. we don't even have Todd LL Cool J dressed. He's just landing at base camp, and and they had two staff PAs, and the the main staff PA or the key set. He was very very good. The the other PA was I guess she's like first team, but she is somewhat. You know what I mean. But I was just like going, there's no freaking way, man. We're not going to make the day. Mm-hmm. And the first th- or the, the key set goes, oh, yeah, we'll make it. And I was like, but we don't have any lights. It's going to be dark here. Yeah. By the time they get LOJ ready and get him out from base camp, it's going to be dark. And I'm not kidding you. It just started getting dark, dark. When LL landed, we shot the scene. And then done. Yeah. 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 I was like, whoa, yeah. blew my mind. But what, but what we would have been done earlier would have been done about four o'clock. But what threw the day behind really threw it behind is one of the stunt drivers 
lost control and wrecked Todd's car that wasn't supposed to be wrecked. Oh, geez. Yeah, slid into a wall. He was supposed to go sliding around like a... He's on this street, supposed to slide around what, this street. It was a hero car, like a picture car for it was the... was a picture car. Yeah. There was two picture cars for Todd. Thank, well, I guess there always are, but thank yeah. God. Because he was supposed to go, you know, slide around mm-hmm. this curve, you know, like a chase scene. And something happened and he went to and locked the brakes up and slid right into this business's wall. So they had to run out, Transpy had to run out and pull Todd's other car off the truck. And, you know, it all took it time. Yeah, yeah, it was a thing. It took about an hour and that hour threw everything behind. But it was so crazy because I wish I could remember that first AD's name. Because I would, you know how you look at the first AD and just kind of get a, because you can just see tension building in them, you know, if they're getting too far behind the good ones you can't yeah. but yeah, yeah. The, the yeah the average ad you can sort yeah. of see behind the eyes there there becomes this yeah and so thing. i i would look over at her and she was just as cool and calm as a cucumber and i was like well if she's not worried i'm not worried you know yeah and she and we pulled it off and it was just like high fives all around it was so cool because i'd never seen anything she at the end of the day she gathered all the crew around in the parking lot where we landed and we still had to go back to base camp, but there was a parking lot that we staged at when mm-hmm. we first got there. She had everybody come into the parking lot like it was a safety meeting and just said, I want to thank everybody here again for all your hard work today. Have a great evening and we'll see you guys tomorrow. I was like, wow, because yeah. I'm just so used to a first AD just treating you like dirt. And that's how it can. It absolutely can be that way. Like this is this is something I think that like we were talking about, this culture is changing. And I think part of this, too, is this overwork. Like this is the big stipulation now in these IATSE um, negotiations coming up is how how long are, is everyone on set? Are we on set for 16 hours? Are we on set for 14 hours? What what is the deal now? And they're really starting to push back on these safety hours. And I think that's part of it, too, is when when you're on hour 18 and you've been out in the heat all day and you've had an N95 mask Mask on on. your face and nothing has gone right, nobody's going to be at their best in that scenario. Exactly. Um, And you're you're exhausted because you've been doing this day in and day out for weeks upon weeks weeks where people don't understand that. Yes. And and very little. And sometimes six day weeks. Like I just did better things. We did two days. We did Saturday and Sunday. Even though Sunday was kind of a short day, we were done by six. But um, that yeah, that consistent schedule wears people down, and that doesn't attribute to a very healthy lifestyle. Um, and yeah, I hope that it's changing. I really do. I hope IATSE holds their ground. I hope they call for longer turnarounds. Um, I don't see any need for anybody to be on set any longer than twelve hours. I yeah. don't. That's a culture thing. It's not a necessity. Well, it was it, that was a big difference for me though. Is that's what we were put in, like the last two days. It's just 12 hours. 12 hours. I can yeah. believe it. Like it's, yesterday, like I was looking at my watch and it was like, it was like 545. And I was like, God, we're going to be here probably till 11 or 12 o'clock at least, at least. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, on all the shows yeah. I ever did at five, six o'clock, I mean, you still, you're barely making That's, half the day. Exactly. Yeah. You still got another six and then we were, ahead, yeah. then we were, and we were walking or I was right. I went and took a shower. I got off, we got off in time that it was like eight o'clock and I was like, well, I'll just stop it. It's taking the men's locker room. If I was like, well, COVID, it may be closed, but it was open. So I just stopped in the, took a shower. So I felt better and fresh and cause I was all sweaty from the day. Yeah. And, and I think some of that's coming down from the epidemiologists and the COVID people who are like, you know, on, on Tacoma, we had, we wanted to keep a 12 hour max day. And if we could get it down to 10, that's really what we wanted to do. Um, and that was a COVID protocol. It wasn't really a set protocol. Oh. So um, it's basically they want to keep you like not around everybody right. for the least amount of time possible. Well, basically. the other thing is uh, if you think about the COVID, you know, if you think about the COVID world is, uh, you know, the thing like like you were just saying that when you're working 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 hour days, you know, you know this as well as I do. People don't understand this. It breaks your immune system down, and you oh, become yes. you become very susceptible for to getting sick. Yes, because I've had times where I was so exhausted from the lack of sleep, and I get enough sleep, and I don't sleep a lot anyway. But mm-hmm. when you're just when you're walking 15 miles a day, and when I tell people I, you walk 15 miles, they kind of like smug, you know, like oh nobody can walk 15 miles an hour. No, you do. So I, you yeah, know, my like average is like 10. Yeah, my average is like 10 miles. It's literally like a yeah, marathon every yeah. day. I've yeah. done 44,000 steps, which was like 15, 16 miles out at UCLA. Yeah. 
You know, you, you move. And when I was BGPA, you move around a lot. People would just have no idea. I've had, that's why I was telling one of the PAs last night. I said, I've had days when I've walked so much and Aaron, the base camp PA, we were talking about this, that I've walked so much. Cause one of the PAs, she was green and her feet were killing her. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I said, get you some super feet. I was going to say, tell me yeah. she wasn't in vans or like chucks or she something. She was down. in, yeah, she was in like uh, those little old cotton girly shoes, you know, mm-hmm. that have, you know, the little thin cotton shoes with no yeah. sole. Yeah. And, uh, and the saddest part about it is I'm going to throw him under the bus. It's, it's Mike Fortane's daughter, he, dr- Mike Drones. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, it was his daughter. Oh, she nice. was great. He was so nervous for her. Yeah. She, it was her first or second day, and she was walkie PA. She had no idea about distro or anything. Yeah. So he like text or he like messaged me, dude. Can you like you know give her a pep talk because she's like really bummed out because she says she feels like she's just like not contributing and she doesn't know anything to do and she wants to do more. So yeah, I went and had a talk with her and. She's a smart kid. She'll, yeah. you know, get you some insoles. Yeah. And, That's what I told and, her. You know, expensive shoes. I know. Yeah. I, I, I was raised, you know, you don't ever spend more than 50 or $60 on shoes. Yeah. No, now I'm spending 120 at yeah. least just because that's what you need to be supportive yep. for 18 hours a day because that's the bottom of your py- pyramid. Have, have it you throws ever, off your hips. It throws yep. off your shoulders, everything. And so I've had nights after a long day out on location where I try to go to sleep and my hips would ache so bad I couldn't sleep. Yeah. You know, it would take me an hour or two hours to fall asleep. Uh, you know where I got the super feet? Where? From your favorite second AD. Oh, no. Who? <laughs> Kate. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. and She who will not be named. I, yeah. yeah. 50, they're like 50 bucks. They're so worth the money. Are they? Yeah, yeah. So my hiking boots, everything, if I'm out, going to be, I have. they have in super those, feet in yeah. them. Yeah. Because, and I, you know, I'll move them from one pair of boots to, to another. Other, yeah. Yes, I don't have like three or four sets. I just have like a couple of sets, but they're a lifesaver these shoes that i'm wearing on i have now are like van pros so they come with a built-in insole because they're for skateboarders oh nice so they're actually great set shoes so there was a two of the pas yesterday that were on set that were wearing vans but they were the regular vans and i said you guys have good shoes if you upgrade and get the pros because the regulars are like 80 bucks and the pros are like 100 yeah i said get the pros because the pros are, have a thicker sole because they're made for professional skateboarders and they yeah. ha- they come with a built-in insole in them i mean you can take the insole out but it's a real insole yeah. and uh i just stumbled onto wearing vans i never knew that they would you know that they would work on set yeah, there, there are some people who wear them and, you know, like I said, there are some people whose jobs on set don't entail the kind of stuff that yours and mine do, right. you know, the, we're, we're doing like 66 floors right. in, a, in a stadium, you know, right. it, it's, there are some people who can get away with the chucks and the regular vans yeah. and the, the girl shoes that you, the, you yeah, know, like hair, hair and makeup and, you know, because the, yeah. I get the set around, you know, with the cast and stuff, but we're on our feet all the time. Yeah. That was another thing that was really, uh was an eye opening but just you know all the sitting around like right in front of you know right in front of set and everything the pa is sitting around yesterday oh well yeah see yeah i know you and i were brought up in a world where that you not couldn't a sit thing. down no. like if the second ad walked no. on set or a second second and saw you sitting down it could really be a big deal i got in trouble on oj because i was sitting down because i had heat exhaustion it yeah. was one of those really hot days in los feliz and I was just, I had this massive headache. I was so dehydrated and I was sitting down with like my hand in my, my head in my hands. And the, the second second came over to me, Kim came over to me and she's like, why are you sitting down? The, the writer over here, he, he says you shouldn't be sitting down. I'm like, I feel terrible. Like I am going to pass out. And like, there was just no and, sympathy and for it. And they don't even like, care. No, that's too well, bad. Yeah. You know, you got to you, stand. If you need to you sit. You wanted to be in the film industry. So yeah, basically yeah. she told me, if you want to sit, do it out yeah. somewhere else where we you're not being you. seen. Yeah. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to do that? I'm doing this on set. I can't, you yeah. know. So I don't subscribe to that. My PA is on Tacoma. I do encourage them to sit. If you want to grab an Apple box, if you want to grab really? a stool. Yes. If I, if long as you're not just jacking around in a situation yeah. where I need you to be yeah. up on your feet. Um, but if you're doing your job, I have no problem with you sitting down and mm-hmm. doing your job at the same time because I think that's part of again the immune system, the body. Yeah. This is this is I I want these people to be around for a long period of time along with myself, and if you treat them like pieces of meat, they're not going to be. Exactly. You know. We're gonna have a camera just I moved up. Um. Yeah. 
but you know even like but what what you're saying there is like uh because kim was a great second second she was young she was like the youngest second second i've ever seen but yeah just remember you know kim from oj yeah how old was she? she was like what 23 she wasn't the youngest by far but she was you know she was young how did she pull that off so quickly she got through the training program oh she was at the dj too yeah yeah that makes sense Hmm. i haven't seen her since oj though i heard she was working on something else and i thought i was going to get on with her but then she's over first thing at the mandalorian i think was the last i heard something like that yeah that's like uh god what was her name i worked with her on uh was it crazy ex-girlfriend i don't know it was a fox show it was like a comedy and she was like a second second and then she ended up was the first ad on hollywood oh nice for ryan murphy yeah it was so weird it was oh, so michelle LeBrun. Yeah, yeah yeah it was yeah it was so weird though because um when i started working with her on i think it was crazy ex-girlfriend was it that fox show it could be. I mean, it was they up didn't on twenty two. It was up on. Oh, then it was. That's not it. They did that remember, North Hollywood stage. I'm trying to remember what show that was. It was one of the Fox shows. It was pretty popular. It was like had like a girl lead, and it was like a comedy. And they were up on the stages like twenty two behind where Moses. If you go straight down the, from mm-hmm. the hill, they were on those back way on the back of the lot. Yeah, yeah. I'd never been over there, but that's where that show was. And uh, when she, when I first saw it, she wasn't fair you know she was pretty green as a second second so it was just so weird to see how fast she went through that because most second seconds get stuck in that world for years i mean you can it depends i got a couple of offers this year to key to start oh, did key, you really and i i didn't oh, key feel second like, second yeah. really you yeah. weren't you well just think key, you're no, ready? key second yeah oh key second key oh second. god forget that and it's just i didn't feel like just yeah i've been second second for you know three yeah. years now i started right out of the training program doing that yeah um just because that was where i was more comfortable i'm just not the base camp person yeah um i'm not going to hold your hand and when i right. and when i say to do something i'm going to expect it to happen what were we on but, we were out you brought me on something or something and you were base camp second and then you, and then you then i pieced out yeah. was that was that was uh dirty john yeah was dirty john was? yeah yeah it was yeah, dirty john that was just not good that was there was a number of things wrong there but i'm gonna, i couldn't believe you know, it though i was like what no, yeah I, well i wasn't happy first of all oh, again that it's makes just sense. i don't like being at base camp it's like okay so for those people who don't know that's somebody who stays with the trailers right. and deals with hair and makeup and cast wants needs you know dreams yeah. all day every day and then the second second actually gets to go to set yeah. and do all these cool things and right. work in a very creative environment and that's what i wanted to do yeah. so that, that wasn't that wasn't conducive to me, but yeah. Um, but well, they're no, having a lot of base camp second seconds now. That's a new are, world. Because, and this is another thing too, an interesting thing is because all these shows are getting so much bigger. There didn't used to be shows like 911 yeah. or like Feud or like, you know, right. Crime Story. These are brand new, huge right. shows that really require um, a certain Except talent like Bones, and skill level. Except for Bones and stuff like that, but they were few and far between. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so they, yeah, you know, they're, uh, Patrick's wife, Taryn, yeah. she does. Second, second. She and he's, just and does he's, second, and second, second he's at se- And he's key second, second. And she deserves yeah. every penny of it. She and does. she probably deserves yeah. a first rate, to be yeah. honest, because yeah. of the things that she does. Yeah. The miracles that she pulls, pulls off. off. Yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. I love Patrick, too. Him and I have had a falling out because, you know, political deal, ideals don't always align. Yeah. And he gets pretty mad about that, but you know, I texted him yesterday and he never texted me back. I texted <laughs> oh, no. him. I texted him stage six. I said, "You miss this place yet?" No, no answer. No answer. Yeah, yeah. It, that's and that's sad. Unfortunate. You know? I mean, okay. you, you and I have some pretty different yeah. ideas about a lot of different things, and, the, and I feel like that's the way. You know, I come from Nebraska. Right. I have a lot of different ideas from yeah. a lot of the things that go on there, but I have some really good friends who are there and and right. Trump supporters and right. things like that, and we still. You know, are, are very, well, even very close, yeah. even, you know. Um, and so it, I, I think there's been this disconnect in our nation where we can't even, we can't even find the place to talk to each other anymore. And that's. Oh, it's, it's a, it's a, we're and, living in bizarro world. You see some of my, you see some of my, uh, or I don't know if you do, but people see my, like a lot of people watch my Instagram stories 
and like I'll put like welcome to clown world because it's just stuff just doesn't even it's just like we're in the upside down yeah well and it's I don't know where this this loss of bridging the gap you know like I said you and I can disagree on things and still have a civilized conversation and still be able to talk to one another without completely writing each other oh, out yeah, of just our lives or just immediately if we figure out we have some different political ideology oh I don't even know you anymore kind of thing yeah, yeah. because you know and I think that's an important way that, I think that's the only way forward from here because I don't see any way any healthy way for this nation to continue in the fact that oh we we only have the left faction and we only have the right faction and there's just nobody willing to meet in between where do you go from there right that's a very divided house you know yeah. and you know it's 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 sad because you know patrick and i were i loved him as a second second you know anytime we were working together because if patrick brought me in i knew it was probably going to be a big big bg day and he needed help with the bg a setting BG and he would set the top and let me set the bottom and uh, we just worked so well together you know and mm -hmm. I, I missed that uh, it was funny because on Hollywood all the staff PAs got, got PO'd because you know here I am show up supposed to be additional PA and Patrick's got me we said all that all that stuff for have you seen Hollywood all of those big yes, all the BG all the BG yeah. there at the gates trying to every day trying to get in and get an audition or whatever mm -hmm. that was me and Patrick setting all this he set right he set yeah. the gates I set all the the crosses and everything mm -hmm. for the back BG and I had all the picture cars because there was no picture cars up by the gates so I would yeah you were taking the, care of those all of mm -hmm. that stuff yeah and I just I missed those days because Patrick was the only second second that trusted me to do stuff like that you know what I mean yeah well, and here it becomes another, and I'm not sure that this is even legal or not. I had a se key second text me if I knew any available PAs. And so I sent over three names. And one of the names he came back with, he said, oh, that's not a good person. They're a Trump supporter. I can't have yeah. them on set. And I was right. like, first of all, I think that was a case of misidentity mis because this person was, I can't imagine being that way. But if they were, fine. Yeah. But. I, I, I was shocked at the fact that he wasn't even going to entertain it because he thought that this person was a Trump supporter was yeah. a Trump supporter. Well, now it's the, the whole vaccine thing now. It does. That's the that's the scariest part for to me about it is because every single thing that comes up. Trump's not even president anymore. It hasn't been for months now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you turn on the TV, like if Bill Maher, you know, I love, I actually love Bill Maher, but I'll, you know, I watch Bill Maher or some of these YouTube shows that I watch. All they're doing is still talking about Trump. I'm like, they're left the shows and they're talking about Trump. I'm like, he's not even president anymore, but they do it because it garners eyeballs. Well, and I think Trump has always been a figure who has captured headlines yep. regardless of being good true, ones or true, bad, bad ones, ones. and yeah. so you know it, if it bleeds it leads kind yeah. of a thing yeah, and yeah, so if sure. it's going to get them that clickbait they don't care if he's been gone for a year that's four true. years yeah. or well 10 that's what years. they're doing yeah that's they're, what they're gonna doing. cash in on him yeah. as long as they can because uh you know like cnn and ms cnn and msnbc you know their ratings have just tanked oh, yeah. since trump left i'm sure I mean, yeah so that's a that's a big Content. I, I was I was sitting there watching an episode of Bill Maher with my wife, and I was like, "Is it sad? after after the election?" And I said, "Is it sad that this episode was kind of boring because there just wasn't the same Fire. madness yeah, that was going yeah. on when Trump was when Trump yeah, was yeah. actually president?" And I said, I, yeah. "I suppose it's a good thing, but this I, I'm bored." Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I thought. Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, I was. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. I was disappointed. In, in some aspects that there wasn't a second term, but then I also sighed a, a sigh of relief that there wasn't a second term for the simple reason is I knew that everything was going to start collapsing and there was no way even Trump was going to be able to hold this stuff together because there was too many, too many walls that had fallen during the COVID shut down. Yeah. And so I knew the economy was going to start collapsing. All of these, th these dominoes were going to start falling and it didn't matter whoever that pr next president was, they, they were, were going to take it. all yes. the brunt for it. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of reason why the leftists just kind of threw Biden in there because he's barely, he barely knows his own name and can tie his own shoes. Well, I think they always thought he's, I think his goal is to be a one-term president. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he was just a placeholder. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, I'm definitely not a Trump fan by any means, but I do know that there's no way that anyone in the world 
Hillary, Elizabeth Warren, Biden would have been able to handle that COVID situation in a way that was graceful or effective because we just got hit blindsided by that thing. Um, And he certainly didn't help himself out. But yeah, it was it was always going to be a tough thing. And now like this Afghanistan thing, like I'm I'm thrilled that we're leaving. Oh, I'm so glad we're out of there. Like everybody's Um, dragging Biden, all of my Republican friends and all my conservative friends. It's a great time to drag Biden if you're going to, you know, because they the left drug Trump for four years. So now we get to drag Biden. I don't give a shit because I'm just glad we're out of there. I'm not dragging. I mean, the way we were handled was horrible but just the simple fact we're the hell out of there that i don't care it, i'm just glad we're out it really disgusts me that all of the presidents previous to biden at least trump set a date yeah um and said hey we're gonna leave by this time um and conveniently it happened to be outside of his term right um but it it was never like they just passed this on to the next president because yep. they knew it was going to be a crap show. Oh, they knew they and knew they it was going to be a want, shit show. They as didn't soon as want we left. it to be on their plate. Yep. They didn't want it to be in their polls, yep. and so they just passed it down the line. And that's just I I my heart hurts for all of the Afghan Afghan people, and my heart hurts for all of the veterans that have yep. you know lost sacrificed and died and for that for 20 years um, because we had no business being there in the first place but here's the deal is i've i said this 15 years ago when we'd only been there five years and i can't believe we were still there five years ago i told friends of mine i told my ex-wife i said the day we leave at afghanistan it's going to revert back to exactly what it was the day that we walked in and it even didn't even take a month 11 hours it was yeah. 11 hours yeah. when exactly. they took it they took yeah. it back, back. and yeah. the, the, I was because just, if you remember uh, i know you were pretty young but when we when that when we went into afghanistan the taliban ruled afghanistan the taliban was the local governing body there in afghanistan when we went in and we yeah. went in and captured Afghanistan and took it away from them. Mm-hmm. But they've been being trained. Like I, I made a, a Facebook post that triggered a bunch of people today. I said, you realize that the same Afghanis that, you know, that are the Taliban today are the same Afghanis that we've been training for the last 20 yeah. years. And well, now and they're they, just better armed. And it, well, and it just even goes back further than that. Did you ever see Charlie Wilson's war? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And basically it goes back to the yep. 70s yeah. where we were arming these yep. people. Well, the Mujahid. M- 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 in that time and then then we're you know it's like it never ends well you know you know the story behind that right it's been a while since i've seen it or read about it yeah i'm pronouncing it wrong it's mahujadadine or something like that which was kind of like the taliban in the 70s mahujadine anyway they were like the rebel fighters of of afghanistan and then Russia invaded Afghanistan because there's a lot of natural resources in Afghanistan as far mm-hmm. as oil, natural gas, stuff like that. So I believe that's why Russia invaded Afghanistan. It's just a desert, a bunch of rocks. There's nothing grows there. Like, why are these armies, like, invading? You know what I mean? And uh, so Russia invaded Afghanistan. Well, when Russia invaded Afghanistan, we started arming the Mujahideen. And that is what the our CIA and our we were having these black op operations, and our covert co, these covert operations where we actually had troops on the ground that were like uh, you know like our spe- special ops that were training the Mujahideen and all this, and that's where Bin Laden came from because mm-hmm. Bin Laden was our biggest CIA asset at that time. So it's just you know it's that kind of bullshit that our government pulls. And it always blows back on us. You know it I mean? does. We it, don't know a, it. We see it on the news. Yeah. We don't really know what it is. And then 10 years later, it blows back on us and, and we I, find out the truth. It's like, it's. I don't know if they, I think they, it's probably the best intentions, you know, yeah, but, I agree. It, but it always ends up, like you said, it always yeah. ends up in this vicious cycle yeah. of just, you know, shooting ourselves in yeah. the foot. And so, yeah, I'm thrilled that we're leaving. My heart hurts for everyone there. I, I hope that, you know, as many people as we can get out, I hope do. Um, it's a it's a whole karma thing too. But, Russia's laughing at us because the oh, same yeah, exactly. the exact they, same thing that did. happened to them yeah. has now just happened to us. And they said it was going to like yeah. uh, Putin said like years and years ago. As soon as they leave Afghanistan, it'll all be for nothing, or everything they're doing there's going to be for nothing because it'll go back to the Taliban. Sure enough, I mean it's it uh, exactly right. 
So what do you think about, I know me and you are, I don't know that we're literally different, but the whole vaccine thing, which we really not even supposed to talk about on YouTube. Isn't that, isn't that not oh, crazy? Really? Any kind of vaccine talk? Like, well, unless it's pro vaccine, I suppose. Yeah. You are really, you could literally lose your YouTube channel. Interesting. Yeah. They, well, yeah. I mean, but I mean, I talk about whatever I want to talk about. It's yeah. just, uh, I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm just, I want pro-science. I wanted to know that these vaccines are safe. I watched the hearing, which I've got, it's on YouTube, where the hearing, like a year ago, where they took the number one virologist that's in charge, that was at that time in charge of all the government. This was, I don't know, remember his name. I can send you the video. I posted it like a week or so, a week ago on Facebook. And he was testifying for Congress how long it would take us to get a vaccine. And he said, point blank, this is just like a year ago. He goes, if everything goes immaculate, which it never does, but let's just say it does. If mm-hmm. everything goes perfect, 18 months. And the congressman goes, so you're telling me, doctor, that no matter what we do, that 18 months is, is going to be as quick as we can have a vaccine. He goes, if you want a safe, effective vaccine, It'll be at least 18 months. He goes, what you don't understand is a vaccine usually takes 10 years to curate from the time it's thought about until it's starting to be put into human bodies. And this is a Congress, whole con- congressional thing. Yeah. And I, I agree to a certain extent, but there's also, you have to, you have to integrate the three M's there. It's mm-hmm. very similar to like, um, like the space race, for instance, right. like everything happened almost instantaneously with that because we were trying to beat Russia. We were right. desperate. We had the three M's. You have motivation, you mm-hmm. have money, and you have manpower. Right. And if you can put those three things behind one thing at, at once, yeah, like absolutely, we could solve world hunger. Right. We could solve climate change. We could do all this stuff, but we just don't have the motivation right. or the money to do it. You have Jeff Bezos going right. to space instead. Yeah. You know, so they've chosen to do that. So if we had all of these scientists and all of these people with money, Dolly Parton was a huge one in that. It just right. gave her. She she didn't go to space. She gave her money to the right. people developing these vaccines. I just right. freaking love her. Um, and so th- I do believe that they can come together and make things happen in a shorter amount of time. The mRNA vaccine, even though that's not the one I got, I got right. the J and J, which is the safest um, one. People don't know this. It's the least effective one, but it's the safest one. It's it's a different technology. Yeah, because it's based on the old flu technology. Flu and so shot. the mRNA stuff has been around for quite some right. time. They've been experimenting with an HIV mRNA right. um, vaccine. So they just really had to take um, a different like limb on the tree they already sort of had the trunk of the tree they just kind of had offshoot it in a different way um which is so i don't think it's as instantaneous as it seems as an overnight success as it seems um but yeah all i can tell you with my is my personally i don't think there needs to be any more people expounding on vaccines that you know are not doctors and i'm certainly not but i can expound on my personal experience with the j and j i did I did get the J and J. I did get that because it, well, first it was the only one offered to me. Wow. Um, and I did, I did get it because I did like the technology behind it. Right. It's well known, um, and so it was just kind of an all around good thing. Um, I had, you know, probably sixteen hours of feeling horrible afterwards. Right. Um, we were, you know, a lot. Of, and there's a did lot. Did your of wife people, get the same one? She yeah. did. She went with me at the same okay. time. Yeah, she That's didn't smart. have hardly any. Um, I'm a little worried about her immunity to it because she didn't have hardly any symptoms. It's just uh, she's got she's you know she's born in Hawaii, but right. she's of Japanese heritage. And I told her that night right. on the ca- couch, I was shivering and I was just in so much pain because the, the the these vaccines tend to go to my thighs. They always have the biggest muscles in my body, right. and they just feel like they're electric gathering there. Shock, yeah. Shocks. Well, you know they're saying that right um, that the the that the the but, vaccines are supposed to stay in a certain part and then it's just going to oh, all maybe. of the organs and all the extremities and stuff. Mine was definitely in my yeah. legs. But anyway, so I told her, I said, well, she's like, well, I, I feel fine. I have a slight headache. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, your people stick four foot swords through their abdomen when they lose. Like that <laughs> yeah, is right. a different culture than yeah. I am from. Okay. Right. So th- this is much different. Um, and so that. I know there was a lot of people, a lot of women particularly, and I was too concerned about, um, fertility after right. this yeah for sure um because this is a time in our lives where we are yep. trying to start our family we've had a significant number of struggles with that right um and so i was very concerned 
um, but I went through an IVF cycle within a month and a half after I got that shot. They told me I was going to get two, at my age, I'm 35, they right. said you can get two good embryos, basically okay. perfectly genetically sound embryos, that's it. And I ended up getting seven. Oh, wow. So if it did anything, it actually made me more fertile. Fertile, yeah, <laughs> so which, is a, I, yeah, which is a plus. I guess. I don't think it had anything until, to do and, with that. but it, Until your kid actually comes out and it's got like three eyes and well, two. Yeah, and, but I'm, I'm not as concerned I'm about kidding. that because, yeah. yeah, like I said, J&J has been around forever. Right. That that flu vaccine has yeah. been around since, what, the 70s? I'm just, I'm just giving you a hard time. But, yeah, yeah so it was, it was fine. I would do it again. Um, I don't know if... I don't know how you feel about these booster shots. Um, so, so I most people when I am posting my leaky vaccine stuff, have you seen my leaky vaccine post stuff? Yeah. And so most yeah. people think that's like some kind of like dream, dreamt up misinformation. Do you understand the technology behind that? The I Merricks? Under, I understand that, yes, there are some vaccines that are like that, um, particularly that chicken vaccine. Yep. Um, I don't think it's it's that way with this one because I don't think the coronavirus needs uh, an excuse to mutate. I don't think it's going to mutate through the the vaccine itself. I think it's just going to do that because that's what a coronavirus does. Well, you do know that the inventor of the MRA technology has said that it was the vaccines that caused the mutations. His MRA vaccines. Now, I've I've heard that, and I've also heard that his role in this is somewhat debated as to how closely he was in the development of these vaccines. Yeah, I've seen that too, but um, it's the, but the problem with that is, is anybody that has anything that anything, if anybody says anything that could be deemed as negative, they're immediately branded as misinformation. So that's why you have this whole body of scientists that are just keeping their mouths shut because they don't want to end up like that. But when it comes down to it, the, all of the scientists all agree. They all agree with the Merricks. They all agree that the vaccines have caused the, the mutations, but they just won't come forward and say it. If you go listen to Brett Weinstein, who Brett Weinstein used to be the biggest liberal, liberal virologist expert in the world on YouTube, and now he's being labeled, a, uh, he's had his YouTube channel strike twice. you know who Brett Weinstein is? Mm -mm, no. Yeah. He's had his YouTube channel strike twice. And I mean, he's, he's as liberal as they get. That's what he is, is a liberal. You know what I mean? He's not like a, he's not like a Bill Maher liberal. You know, he was almost, you know, but, but he started pushing back because his brother uh, got fired from one of the colleges up in Washington, like two or three years ago. I think his brother's Eric Weinstein. And uh, it was because the black people said the white people couldn't come to class, to come to college one day. Because it was going to be a black students only day. And so no, no white people were allowed at college. And Eric Weinstein said, I'm not going to abide by that. That's racist. And so he ended up getting fired for it. So it created this. It's a, what's the name of that college? Anyway, it's a whole big deal. You should look into it. So Joe Rogan had Eric on his podcast. And then that's how uh, this whole thing, Brett with Brett and everything. Then Brett started his own podcast called The Dark Horse. And mostly, I mean, he's, he's a, he's like a biologist and a, vi a virologist. And, you know, he's the one that talked about, you know, that, um, the, the vaccines, how they're supposed to behave and they're ending up in people's, the blood men brain and people are, oh, that surrounds people's brains and stuff. They're finding the vaccine up there. And he goes, no vaccines ever done that. I think, I think with vaccines and I think this is the, with everything in life, there is always a cost and a benefit that you have to oh, analyze I totally agree. Yeah, um, I totally for agree. yourself. Yeah, um, I agree. And there's, there's always a choice, but yep. the choice may not be a good one. So like I saw, I saw a story basically talking about, you know, people are, well, I don't want to volunteer for these, um, on their untested and right. uh, their, these vaccines. And right. I'm like, well, you've already volunteered for this COVID. giant pandemic right. study, this study. We're yep. in it now. Yep. You're just part of the control group. Right. So you've, you've picked a side regardless. And so now, you know, oh, I agree with that. There, there are, I, I have an, an aunt, a great aunt right now who she just had, um, she had her and her husband had COVID probably six months ago. They were not vaccinated. Um, he died of a heart attack a month later, just kind of out of the blue. Um, it, of course the death certificate says heart attack, but I suspect it was, it was, COVID. It was long COVID yeah. related. Um, and then she just here four weeks, no, probably two weeks ago had a brain bleed. Um, 
which like an aneurysm type thing and i think again similar to a long covid because she still has not been vaccinated so there but, are these but you effects. know you know a lot of that is going on in the vaccinated community too right well so that's what i'm saying yeah. if you, i think i think because i think what it is is you know the the vaccines what a lot of people don't understand is the vaccines were engineered the mra the mnra technology engineered the vaccines to mimic the 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 virus so i think they're almost one in the same, you know, like, you know, like ideal vaccines, you know what an, an ideal vaccine is or yeah. what they consider a perfect vaccine. That's like the mumps, the me, you know, the yeah. measles, the polio vaccines. Those are considered or, or science labels those perfect vaccines because they stop the transmission of the pathogen, number one. And but the technology, a lot of times they actually use part of the virus to manufacture the vaccine. So when you get that vaccine, you're being introduced to some of the virus being put in you. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. But it 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 causes the vaccine to to boost your immune system to where it completely shuts down the virus. And the mRNA technology does not do that. It just keeps you from die from getting so sick and dying. But as far as stopping the spread of the virus, it has basically has nothing to do with that. It's yeah. not going to do oh, it. Oh, I 100% agree. Yeah. And this is partly why, you know, and the WHO and the CDC, you know, I have issues with both of those bodies. Um, I here. think if they were just honest with people from the beginning. Oh, exactly. Like we, That's we, why I don't trust them. They just do don't yeah. over the years they have just consistently and it's insulting because i think they think the american people are just, stupid just stupid they think they're like overlords and, that they know better for us well and they just want to they want you to get the pieces of information that they, they want, want you, you to, to have. get yep but if they just laid out the information and said hey look here's the thing like we don't have all the numbers on masks yep. but we think it's a good idea right so you know i just to stop the mitigation of this this um virus we urge you to wear a mask even right. though we don't have all the numbers because i and i do see that as working in you know hollywood right. in my real life i see that it does work yeah. it's not perfect it needs to be part of a layered effect right. you need ma masks you need ventilation systems you need vaccines all yeah. of these things are what it's going to eventually get us out of this but they're not being on it they haven't been from the beginning from the and beginning. so now they're wondering why people are worried about these vaccines well for years like pfizer has been going out and shoving oxycodone down people's right. throats yep. it's like oh yeah for sure you can't have it both ways yep. they've had you know the wrong run of this circus for years right throwing you know crap medicine down your throat and now all of a sudden they're saying well this is what's going to save you we don't really believe you anymore because we've seen right. five movies where Mark Ruffalo played the lawyer who right. went after you guys, you know. But the, but then this. the other the other thing is where I come from it is, um, you know, if you take like, say, masks, for instance, masks work if it's like a if it's a, you know, if it's a pathogen that, that moves from like spittle. You know, like you're over there. If you have a mask on right now and I'm talking and I'm spitting while I'm talking and that gets on you, that mask will save you. But if it's an airborne pathogen, which is what COVID is, it would be like trying to use a mask to stop the smell of a fart. It's not going to work at all because those little bitty tiny in, 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 in the in that's in the air they're going to go right through that mask. The only thing that'll, st I mean, that, that'll really help stop that is like an N95 respirator mask. Yes. But nobody's wearing those. Yes, that, well, that's, that's why, that's why it has to be part of this layered effect. Um, and people, and people, that people, uh, what they label me an anti-masker, I wear N95s. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've got a bunch of those in my car yeah. from every job ever. But yeah. most people wear those little throwaway. I actually have the some surgical of those masks. Too. Yeah, but see, I have the N95. Yes. Yeah. And see, okay, so, so there this, was an interesting. This is what everybody wears. The surgical mask. This yes. does nothing. Y the only thing little. this is going to do is if we're really close to each other talking, and like I said, I spit or, you know, wipe right, my nose. I, yes. yeah. I, I do agree with you, yeah. and I'm going to share a story as to why I agree with you on that scenario. So we were um, shooting Tacoma here this season, and we got shut down for two weeks because the day player came on and didn't know he had COVID. Yeah. So we were in um, our chief's office set, which is no bigger than this, and we had probably six to eight people in there. Um, and the two actors were across the desk like this and another actor was here on his left So this guy me here has COVID He's laughing into this person's face and this person's face who are actors without their masks on and 
then we have a dolly grip who is in the back right corner right here okay so there were two people who came out of that everyone else in that room uh, came out just fine but there was two people who came down with it one was right here across directly right. across and the other one was the guy wearing the surgical mask in the corner right. over here my theory is is that there was a window right here there was a big open door here because it was off camera and that's right. where our air scrubber was right behind this other actor and it was about the ventilation there was no ventilation Placing in that there. back corner yeah. and that surgical mask wasn't going to save him and it just the the air and filled up with the virus this actor yeah. didn't get it even though he wasn't wearing a mask and this actor did yeah so it like i said this is this is definitely a part of a layered effect and i wish they would continue to say that rather than just like bullshit everybody bullshit because my problem is is taking I have, things away like don't wear yeah. your mask if you're vaccinated oh no put your mask, mask back, back on, on. just yeah. be honest about yeah. it well you know why that happened right is because the vaccinated are carrying a lot of vaccinated are carrying heavier viral loads than they expected yeah. yes than they expected, yeah. yeah so i had the wrong camera on i want to show everybody here really quick so this is just fyi guys do not if you if you're trying to protect yourself from covid do not wear these do not buy these do not wear these these do these virtually do nothing you might get 20 percent protection out of one of these maybe i would say no, you if you get in the room with somebody if it, if alexis had covid right now and i was wearing this i would get covid you need one of these these are like an N95 respirator mask. And these will protect you because you can wear these when you're working in a dusty environment and stuff like that. They're very thick and they're a pain in the ass to wear because they're so thick. But that's what you need. Yeah, and they're horrible in the heat. If yeah, you're out in the heat, terrible. it's it's really, and working and, and walking the kind of steps that we are, it's a it's a really hurt horrible your, thing to do, but it's, it's worth it, I guess. And they hurt know. my ears. Because they're so tight. Yeah, ear yeah, savers. My, yeah. Those are uh, Oh, yeah. Godsend. Everybody's got the little thing now that goes around your neck, yes. I guess. Yeah, I need to get one of those. But, yeah, it's uh, my whole thing is if, like you said, if they would just be honest and not bullshit people. Because when they start bullshitting people, because when they were talking about wearing masks, when I got COVID, I was wearing an N95 mask. I was wearing a mask before anybody was. I was. I can show you pictures where I was wearing a mask already in April of 2020. Because I was watching so, all those horrific yeah, videos coming out of China, China. so I, I thought ever, I thought it, I thought everybody right was going to die. Yeah, I thought everybody was going to die. With the amount of homeless yep, yep, in Los Angeles, yep. I was very concerned yep. that, was like telling, you said, there are going to be dead bodies on the street. street kind of a I thing. was telling everybody, everybody's going to freaking die. Everybody's going to get this, and then I ended up looking like a moron. I have, <laughs> I have, I have my conservative friends that have literally just they disowned me because they said I was fear mongering everybody about. The, the COVID in the initial when I had it I was doing podcasts when I had COVID you know mm -hmm. after I got a little bit better after the initial four days I thought I was going to literally die wasn't sure if I was going to make it and now I'm still living with long COVID which has been the hardest thing yeah so yeah the, the biggest thing with these vaccines I think you have to make a determination with your, where your health is and where your health is with those people around you. Yeah. Like, for instance, I wanted to go home and see my 94-year-old right. oh, yeah, grandfather. Sure. And there was yeah. no way in hell I was yeah. going to do that if I wasn't vaccinated. Right. Because even if there was that small chance that I bring it to him, like, I did not want right. to live with that on my conscience. So this has to be a very personal and very, um, it, it needs to be within, you need to think about yourself and your family and and what the good thing is for those people around you. Absolutely. Um, and if you, like, you know, for instance, if my wife gets pregnant here this December, we're planning on transferring in December. Yeah, so you guys are going to have to take all the will, precautions. We will not, we will not be giving her a booster during right. that time, but we, she won't be working either. She right. will be at home, like just staying away from people and staying safe. And right. it's, we we're lucky. We have the money and the ability to do that. We've been very blessed. But that's also something that we have to consider for ourselves. The amount right. of money and the amount of heartache that we've been through, risking that pregnancy is absolutely not, not an option. It. Yeah. Not an option. Or even being around people that, you know, they could be risky, you know. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, so, you know, you were, 
you were here in California the entire time for the pandemic, right? Yes. You didn't go anywhere. We, you know, it's funny. We, I literally was within, tw- we had our go bags packed. Mm-hmm. We had the sed- sedative medicine for the cat. We had everything ready to go. And I called my dad and, and he said, there's a big storm moving through the South part. Cause we were going to go over through right. kind of toward drive. Texas. Yeah, yeah. We weren't going to fly. We were going to drive, drive it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and cause, cause of the cat, you right. know, kind of thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and then and, it all got shut down. And it, and so, because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a part of the biggest social experiment right. in the last fifty years. Right. And so he said, "Wait this out, and then if you still want to come, then you guys come on up." So it was about you know a forty-eight hour storm there, and by the end of that, you know, we kind of decided, well, let's just, just ride it. Let's out. just stick it out. Let's yeah. see what happens here. Yeah, I was going to be gone by January, January first. I didn't think I was going to be after, and then here I'm still here. But the craziest thing was, is so during, so I rode my electric bike, that one right there in the floor, mm-hmm. on both sides of the 405 freeway, like a movie. Yeah. I wish I'd have had my drone because I would have droned it. Yeah. It, it'll never happen again in history. It was a ghost town. It I was, was driving wild. my bicycle. I rode it up the on-ramp onto the freeway and rode it all the way down to the next exit and i went through all the lanes and mm-hmm. nobody passed me and i got off went under the freeway got back up on the other side and went back down to where i was and i was like nobody had ever believed this it was yeah, it, it was it a was. ghost town and there was nobody anywhere i was riding that electric bike every day here and there and there was nobody anywhere uh, and then I was staying away from everybody. I wasn't, you know, talking to anybody or anything, but it just, there was no people anywhere. It was like a ghost. town, was like something out of a movie, like the purge or something. Everybody was hiding. Yeah. Um, but so with that, cause I do, I would get out on my bicycle, you know, staying away from people after I got over COVID and everything. And it was just so weird because I felt I had antibodies anyway, and I was protected, but you know, so I would just get out when it, but the, the, it was just, there was nobody anywhere unless you went to a grocery store. At gross, there would be a few people, yeah, be few a people milling around in the mm-hmm. grocery store. And then in October, my brother gets married in Texas. So I hop on a plane here. I get the John Wayne Airport, fly out like at seven in the morning. He's getting married like at seven o'clock that evening. Like everything starts at 5 p.m. And I'm leaving here like at seven in the morning. And I'm a little iffy about getting on an airplane you know, yes. the whole, it's just the weird, first time back just was, a little bit weirded wild. out. Yeah, yeah, just a little weirded out about the whole thing. And then, so I, I go to the John Wayne Airport. It's a ghost town. There's nobody in that airport. I mean, it's just it's few people here and there. All the restaurants are closed. There's no coffee. There's no, no, all the stuff you do at the airport in the morning, it's not there. Yeah. There's no donuts, no rolls, no croissants, no coffee. It's all closed. But the planes are flying. So I get on my plane. The whole, it's empty. There's, you know, maybe, I don't know, there might have been 25, 30 people on that plane. Yeah. Maybe. And uh, fly to Las Vegas. So weird. And change planes in Las Vegas to go to Texas. But it was weird. So did that, change planes in Vegas. Now, Vegas was a little bit more people in Vegas. Uh, a lot more compared to here. But it still wasn't what you would expect the Vegas airport to be. Yeah. I get to Texas and land in Lubbock, where I'm from. It's like there's nothing going on over there. Yeah, it's like it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Everybody's everywhere. All the restaurants are open. There's a bunch of guys sitting at one of the the outer, it's like a bar that's built out into the air- airport. So there's just guys all lined up at the bars, on the bar stools, drinking beer. Nobody's got a mask on. Uh, so my, their family, but it's like my, it was like my mother's cousin, Daryl, uh, and his wife picked me up, and I haven't seen them since I was, like, probably 14 years old, maybe. And they're, like, elderly now. You know what I mean? They were, like, my age now, and I seen them last, and now they're, like, elderly. But they picked me up, no masks, you know. They're in their late 60s, early 70s, probably. We go to my brother's wedding, and we're literally, it starts, like, at 5, and they're picking me up, like, at 3.35 or something. So it's, like, a beeline to get there. We get there. There's over a hundred people at this wedding mm-hmm. and Welcome my, to Texas. my dad's there. Yeah. My dad's 81 years old. His older brother, my uncle Jim is there. Who's 85, 86, 87. I don't know. He's up there. He's there. All of our family are there. All of these people are there. Guess how many masks there were? Yeah. Zero. Zero. Yeah. And so 
I was standing there talking to my dad and my brother, and I'm just kind of like, and I was freaked out about it. I'm thinking, wow, I was kind of freaked out about it. And uh, because there were so many elderly people there, you know what I mean? There's a lot of elderly people. And I just, I didn't really know how to bring it up. So I just kind of, uh, you know, it was just, you know, Nebraska people's the same where people don't really just chit chat. We're all just kind of, it's me and my brother and my dad, we're just kind of standing there. And I'm looking around at all the people milling around and hugging and talking. And, and I went, you know, this is like a, I don't know. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. It just kind of seems weird. Like nobody, there's nobody wearing mask or, you know, I looked at my brother and I said, like, w- aren't you worried about like, if like a, if there's like a, a bunch of people or somebody was to get COVID and there was a, there ends up being like an outbreak here at the wedding, you know, like, don't that worry you? He goes, no. Nah. I said, okay. I said, I just wondered. And I said, I said something else, but I don't remember what I said, but my dad looked at me, he's 81 years old and he goes, well, son, if you look out there right now, there's about a hundred people here. And, uh, he looked at my brother and they both looked at me and he goes, as far as we know, you're the only one we know that's had COVID. Mm-hmm. And my brother goes, and I've never had a mask on. I don't ha- I don't own one. And I went, well, well, that is true. And so I monitored all of those people because people flew in from all over the United States. You know, how people got COVID, COVID at that wedding. Zero. Yeah. Not one. And I think there's something to be said, too, about, you know, they are elderly and, you know, they may come from very small areas, especially yeah. like, you know, where I come from. There aren't a lot of people gathering in large quantities because right. it is kind of a sprawl right. out farmland kind of an area. And that just by itself saves you a lot because you just don't have the square miles right. or people in the square miles that you do here. Um, and so, yeah, that doesn't necessarily hugely surprise me. You know what? You know what my theory is on it? I think it is, I think the number one thing I did when I got COVID is I do this all the time. When I get sick, I'm kind of like a bear. I just hibernate. I want to be like in a dark room where there's no sunshine, where it just stays dark. When I wake up, I don't know if it's day or night. And I just want to sleep until I, when I wake up, I know I'm better. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I've always been that way since I was a child. I think that was the worst thing you can do if you have COVID. I think that. I think it exacerbates it. I think it makes it a lot worse. Uh, And I think the reason that my family, my dad, my brothers, and all of my family, I think the reason none of them have have had COVID, and I think the, and they don't, they go in grocery stores, they go in the convenience store. Like when I, we went, that's what I was saying. When we went, we went to the bar, we went to the bar, there was probably 65 to 100 people in this little bar. It was packed. The only people that had masks on, they worked there. We went to a nice steakhouse. The only people that had masks on were the people that were working there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So my brother's not just protecting himself. You know what I mean? Like he's going to town. But I think the reason that none of them have COVID is because I think the sun, now not the new strain, not the Delta strain, Mm -hmm. but I think the old original strain of COVID, I don't think it did real well in a lot of direct sunlight for people that was getting a lot of direct sunlight. That could be. And my family all work in agriculture. So my brother's shoeing horses every day. He's kicking bulls. Is it cold there in the wintertime? In the wintertime, it's cold. But he's, you know, he's out loading bulls on trailers, loading cattle on trailers. So his body gets a overload of different types of bacteria on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. you know, holding a horse's foot, you know, a horse walks around on their own crap all day. You know what I mean? So my brother's just getting, and I think his immune system is so strong to somebody like me who's sitting in an office all day that doesn't have any windows in it. Mm -hmm. And COVID just, I mean, it literally just. Yeah. Flattened me. Yeah, I, I see. I can see that. And I think there probably is some science that, you know, I think they always said straight out from the beginning that it, on surfaces, it doesn't do well, particularly in direct right. sunlight. Sunlight was always one of the things, yeah. like you said, not the Delta of strain. I don't know. No, I, th- I don't know that many people do no, know what a, this, so all this the people, new entails. There's a lot of people over there but, where I'm from getting sick with the Delta. Like my, one of my best friends, I grew, my childhood friend, he's a doctor. Yeah. He's the town doctor. And I can show you his Facebook page right now. And all he's doing is saying, please go get vaccinated. Everybody that we have that's sick right now is people that are unvaccinated. Yes. We have one person that's seriously ill that was vaccinated. Yeah. And it's, 
you, the, it's just going to continue. It, that's that's the thing too. If your brother and your dad were sort of semi immune to this other strain, which they're not going to be is, the Delta. Yeah. They may not yeah, be to this be. next one. I don't think they and, will be. And if they aren't to Delta, they sure as heck aren't yeah. going to be to the, the next, next one because this yeah. is just going to keep going. Yeah. This is a cycle that doesn't yeah. end. I don't, you know, I know that people well, think, well, where where do we get out of this? We don't really get out of this. Um, we get to the point where, like, do you remember reading The Hot Zone? Did you mm-hmm. ever go back yeah. and read that? I didn't go back and reread it. I read it when it really originally it came out. It was such a good book. Yeah. I was so mad at my college professor for making me read it, but it was such a good yeah. read. Basically, one of the things that it says in that book about viruses is that a, a virus like Ebola that is super deadly does not transmit as easily as you right. would think. Because it's like it's like a ninety. Yeah, it's not. A, it's not as contagious as people think. It, yeah. As you would think, yeah. you literally have to be spitting blood yeah. in somebody's face for it to yeah. be that um, to get you sick. Right. But these viruses that spread, like flu, spread very, very easily, easily. Yeah. aren't that deadly. They right. sort of have this trade-off. So I hope eventually. Here's my hope: is that eventually, you know, when when they keep saying this, this virus is more catching. This virus is more catching. I think that's a good thing because I think that's our way out of this is that the more catching it becomes, the less deadly it eventually becomes. We just have to get there. My hope is with a Delta variant, because I've been watching Israel really close and uh, the Netherlands because they had a huge, huge, crazy spike for the Delta originally. And then it just I'm sorry, not not Israel. Israel's going through a lot right now. I'm talking about India. Yeah. And India doesn't have very good sanitation. Like no. most people don't even have indoor plumbing and mm-hmm. water. And that's one of the neat made, one of the main things you need is to be able to wash your hands and keep yourself clean. And they don't even have that luxury. But the Delta variant, even though it surged like crazy and scared everybody, it died just as quick as it surged. So I'm hoping that happens here as well. That's my hope. My biggest fear is the virus, because what people don't understand is the reason the virus is mutating. That's why all my friends, I, friends of mine that because they everybody thinks i'm like a virologist i'm not i just read about the viruses and i read the hot zone in 95 when it came out and did a radio interview with kit craddock you know who kit craddock in the morning was mm, no he was a world-renowned dj out of dallas that was syndicated all of the united states uh and him and i were reading the book at the same time and we were discussing it on the radio i'd call in but um what people don't understand is Like my friends are talking about vitamins and stuff, you know, should I do vitamins or like a a vitamin D pack or all these Z packs and Mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm like, for the original strain of COVID, I would say yes, that would probably really help you to boost boost your immune system and all that stuff. With these new variants, with it like the Delta variant, what people don't understand is the, the virus is mutating not to combat people's natural immune system. It's already that these new variants are stronger than your natural immune system. They are mutating to battle the vaccines. The mutations are fighting the vaccines to break the vaccines down. So a strain will come along that the vaccines don't work against. Yeah, because it's a living thing and it's idea. It wants to infect as many people as it can while staying alive. So that's why it's getting called a a hotter vaccine. Yeah, we need to wrap this up. No, I was just curious Uh, what time. We uh, can talk forever. I'm (laughs) I'm down with that. But yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's a sad, scary thing. And I do hope that, you know, what, that video that I sent you the other day Mm -hmm. about that guy basically saying, okay, I like him a lot because he's not a bullshitter and he puts it out there the way it really needs to be you know he's yeah. super super pro vaccine but he's a doctor so and i don't agree with everything he says yeah. but i think he pretty much hit the nail on the head you know if we're looking at the numbers of, of you know just what is it 359 million people here in the u.s and like this the certain percentage that this kills we are 400,000 people yet that need to die before right. we're at that percentage. percentage so how do we save those lives how do we sort of mitigate this down um, to a point where those people don't need to necessarily die needlessly, or maybe we only lose 250 instead of the full 400. Right. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think it's like I said, this layered effect of masks, vac- vaccines, and then uh, ven- ventilating and social distancing when right. you can. It's not always a possibility, particularly in the industry that we right. work in. I was shocked at how well some of these solutions work on the on the these movie sets where we are. Yeah, the ventilators and stuff. The and air kind scrubbers of, yeah, and stuff are kind of blew wonderful, my mind, yeah. wonderful thing. I want. I wish every classroom in the nation had, had one of one. those, except yeah. for they sound like a jet engine is taking off behind yeah, you. Yeah, B- BB was throwing a fit yesterday because yes. we they could hear the one that the medic medical person the CCO was running for us on stage. Yeah. 
We had to shut it off. But they work. Yeah, they they really do work. And and I think, you know, eventually we're going to get to a point where this thing is, is less deadly. Um, I just don't know how many more mutations we have to go before we're there. I think this, this virus doesn't act the way a normal virus would because right. I do think this came from a lab. I, I do think too. I think if it had come from the wet the wet market, I don't think there nah. would be wet markets in China anymore. I think they would have yep. shut them down. Yep, I agree. Um, and so, it's the Wuhan freaking virology lab. It's the it, same it name as the virus. Wild, like, it would be Like John Stewart. It, it's like, it originated there, yeah. and so it would be a wild coincidence yeah. if it did. Yeah. Um, I, I said it from the beginning. Yeah. I got thrown off Facebook for a month. I got a 30-day ban on Facebook because I was saying like seven months ago that I was, you know, fighting with people going, are you out of your mind? It didn't come from no damn wet market. It came from the damn Wuhan lab. That was before people knew that there was, people didn't even know originally yeah. that there was a lab there called the Wuhan yeah. uh, coronavirus virology, virology institute, institute, institute or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's, 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 and as soon as I heard that, I was like, I heard it and I heard it was going on from China when all this shit was going on in China. They kept talking about it like I would hear people talking in Chinese and then they would mention that lab. I was being like, huh, they must be studying the wet market there. They, Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. They have a lab right there so they can study all the stuff at the wet market to find out. And then I went, wait a minute. Yeah. They have a freaking... What kind of studies well, are they doing part, there to begin with? And part of that with? too is this is this woke culture, this cancel culture of well, you're speaking ill of them, and I don't I don't believe that they did it nefariously. No, I, I don't think either. I, I think it's just like, an accident. It's like what yeah. the hot zone with yeah, Ebola. Yeah, yeah. We had yeah. a guy here in the United yeah. States in yeah. Washington D.C. driving around with dead <laughs> Ebola oh. monkeys in his trunk. trunk. Yep. Like like crap happens. happens okay. Yep. So like yes, yeah, somebody yep. messed up. Yep. And it just happened to get out, and it just it just happened to be the one that. Oh, I seen a movie. Was it Pathogen or what movie was it? Was where it the, Contagion? Is that Contagion, the where the the girl in the lab is like working, and then she reaches into the incubator thing, and so, it's something like just slash. Just rips the suit. It just no, it just like cuts it a little bit, just a little tiny slash, and she just feels this. And they did it really well in the movie because like, she just felt like this rush of air, you know, like when you rip your pants or yeah. something, and she's like. Oh yeah. my God. Oh my God. And then she like grabs tape and tapes it up so nobody can see it. And then she goes home that night and starts getting sick. And then it just, and then it's, then, yeah, yeah and then it's you're, on. It's over. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, yeah, it's, but my real belief though, and I really absolutely a hundred percent believe that they knew the vaccines were leaky to begin with and they just rushed them out there. I believe that the vaccines caused these new hotter mutations, just exactly like the Merrick's the same thing in chickens because we're seeing the same thing but the problem is is if this is if what i believe is it ends up being true we're going to see this because the number one thing i said this a, a month or two months ago and, and people told me to stop posting that on facebook because you're just talking about mis you're just spreading misinformation you know what i said two months ago or a month and a half ago you probably saw it mm -hmm. well everybody's gonna have to have everybody's oh. gonna get booster shots Booster shots, And yeah. nobody nobody had heard at that time there would be any booster shots. But I, I said, I, I knew there was going to be booster shots. See, I disagree with that. But for a more, for a moral reason, like I think, I think booster shots are a great idea mm -hmm. for those people who are immune compromised and people above a certain age. Right. Um, like my 90 year old grandfather right. absolutely should be in first in line for his boost, booster shot. He, he, he has, you know, flu vaccines and right. pneumonia shots that he's constantly getting boosters for. This should be no right. different. Um, but I, I disagree and I don't know why the CDC has done this, um, to give everybody a booster shot when there are people in the world who haven't even gotten their first dose of a vaccine yet. I think we need to work to get those vaccines out to other countries who need them, third world countries who don't have access and don't have money versus just taking these third vaccines for ourselves. I think that's a very... Um, poor moral way to go about this. I would absolutely completely agree with you if it wasn't for the fact that I believe these vaccines are leaky vaccines and they knew they were leaky vaccines. So what the problem is, is like with Merrick's virus. So those chickens have to be, they have to be vaccinated and vaccinated and vaccinated because as the, as the, as the virus gets into them, as the vaccine gets weaker, the chickens get sicker. But if they keep them vaxxed up, the chickens are absolutely fine. The chickens that are not vaccinated are actually cold. So like if you're a chicken farmer and you order a thousand chickens and then you realize that one of your freezers went out and you lost a couple of hundred doses of vax, mm -hmm. all of those birds are killed immediately. 
There is no unvaccinated chickens. They're all vaccinated. They have to be vaccinated. And any chicken that gets Merrix that's not vaccinated, they're dead within eight to 10 days. There's no ends if ends if buts about it. They don't survive. And and it's because of the leaky vaccine. The leaky vaccine caused the vir- the, the viruses to mutate. So now the viruses are, are you read you read hot zone. Mm-hmm. So now the that virus, the Merrix virus now in the poultry industry is what scientists consider a hot that a hot contagion. It's a hot virus. It's mutated from an original strain, and it's deadly to the. It's it's a hundred percent fatal to any bird that's not vaccinated. But the birds that are vaccinated, they don't even really get that sick from you. Wouldn't even know that there's Merrix in your pol- in in your group of mm-hmm. chickens if they're all vaccinated. Makes sense. But if you have one bird that's not vaccinated, they're going to be dead. So if that's true, and these vi- and what I believe that these vaccines were leaky vaccines, the reason they're going to frantically, we'll see. I could be wrong, but what I believe, seven to eight months. You're going to see a frantic push, just like the original push to get everybody vaccinated. You're going to see a frantic push. They're going to be setting up lines again at the at Dodger Stadium for everybody to come get their booster. Because if these vaccines are leaky vaccines, that means they're going to break down in less than a year. If they start breaking down, you're going to see just like what happened in Israel right now. 90% of the people that are in ICU in Israel are vaccinated. So what you're saying is we just basically go back. If this is the case, then we just go back to square one, basically. No, but you just need your booster shot. You need your level. It, 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 but it's, if you don't get it, then what happens? You're screwed. You're going to be just like an unvaccinated person. Or you might not get as sick as an unvaccinated person, but you're going to get deathly ill. Does that make sense? It's basically your virus levels here, mm-hmm. right? So the virus can't get in. But... Over the months, your virus levels, I mean, your your uh, vaccine level starts going down. So you have all of this that can inf- the virus can get in and infiltrate because your your vaccine's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Mm-hmm. So if you're eight months out, if it's been eight, there was a doctor. This, you know how I put this together, is because when I people first started going, oh, you the, you mean you can still get it if you're vaccinated? There was a doctor here in L.A. You can't even find the story anymore. But he had been vaccinated at the beginning of the pandemic and he died of he died of covid. And it had been six or seven months or maybe eight months since he had been vaccinated. And I went, wow, that's that's weird. Misinformation. I said, I said, that's I said, that's weird, because why would he die? You know, and then and then there was was never meant to keep you from. I think I wish they would just had come out and said that to begin with these vaccines were never, never meant. meant to keep you from getting it they're no. meant to keep you out of the hospitals because keep you essentially alive. Yep. like let's just be real about it the government doesn't really give a crap about you but no, no, they no. don't want the hospital right. to be over to be over to collapse yeah. and they yeah. will if so many people at once come down with these these variants and so that's where this this push came from with all these vaccines and if they were just honest about it and said it like that but the problem is is they can't be honest about it why because the science community, these vaccines are named by scientists, by the scientists, by the scientists that have run the test and did all of the, the, the experiments and everything and found their results on Merrick's virus. They named these viruses a leaky vaccine. That's what they're named in the medical community. And in the scientist in the virology community, that's what they call them. If you start telling the general public that we're going to be giving out leaky vaccines that shed, <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? The, these vaccines yeah. shed. You heard you would remember when you would hear that just a little bit. And you'd be like, "Shed? What is the? What are they talking?" The and then it just virus. went away. And then yeah. it went away. And then it went away. There, you can't find anything now. You can Google like, uh, "Is the virus?" There's nothing on it. It was. It came out for like a week, and and it was saying, well, you know, vaccinated people or they're carrying a higher higher viral load, so you got to be careful because well, they could I, be shedding the virus. About so you did have COVID? Yes. Did you test for COVID for the nine one one that you went on? Yeah. Um, because I know that when our first humor came down with it, we couldn't test him for a certain number of months because he was shedding virus uh-huh. and he would test positive Every continuously. Yep. And even though he didn't yep. have it, it was just dead particles yep. of the virus being yep. shed. Well, I didn't even I, now that was news to me. And you know, how I just found this out because one of my really good friends, Anna, it's actually that's her dog that I started babysitting like a year ago when she was going on vacation in New York in 2019. And I still have him. Uh, she's in Mexico right now, went to Cabo, got ready to leave with her friends. She tested positive for COVID. 
So she was going to be thought she was going to be quarantined there, but now they're letting you fly after 10 days, even if you're testing positive, because there's people that are testing positive for months and months and months after they've had original COVID, because you yeah. can be shedding the virus for months. Well, and it's, it, but it's not live virus though. Right. It's, yeah. It's no, you're not contagious. You're, yeah. You're, they say you're not contagious. Your body yeah. has dismantled yeah. the right. virus, and yeah. it literally is just little dead pieces yeah. of it that are coming out and are no longer a problem. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, that's that's what I was wondering that as I was coming yeah. down, whether they tested you if you were outside of that zone of shedding the virus yeah, anymore. I've, I've been tested like 15 or 20 times, even on the commercials and the videos. I did my first COVID test probably about three months ago, maybe three and a half, four months ago, maybe a little longer, maybe five months ago. And it came back negative. But why I was so arrogant about not getting vaccinated is because I very well understand how natural immunity works. So when all these doctors and all these people were out there going, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you had COVID. You don't know how much you're protected. You have to get vaccinated. Everybody's got to get vaccinated. I was like, well, that's bulls. My buzzer's not. I was like, that's bullshit. You know what I mean? You don't. If you've had COVID, you're immune to it. You're immune. But until I stumbled onto the leaky vaccination and read like a hundred pages of how that works. So if, and so I don't know, I'm on the fence about it because there was an outbreak, the outbreak in Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Out of all of their most critical vaccinated, their most critical vaccinated, um, their, their, I'm sorry, their most critical ICU patients, 40% of them were vaccinated and 1% of them were reinfected from COVID. So all the people that had already had COVID did were fine. It, and this is supposedly with the Delta too. But my theory is, so I don't know, because it contradicts what I believe. Because what I believe is I think that's why they were having a, a, a panic attack and were so frantically trying to get even people that had had COVID before to vaccinate. Because I believe as these strains get hotter, Mm -hmm. it's not the original you have you have yes. antibodies for that original yes. little tiny weak strain of covid 14 yeah. but as these variants get hotter your antibodies aren't going to do shit yeah. to protect our, you from those hot variants our epidemiologist yeah. um on our show he basically said think about it like a hand and with every variant it, it Gets, changes yep. oh, the thumb goes away okay so now yep. the thumb's different and you've have you have these four markers yep. okay you're still good oh but now the pointer finger is gone yep. now you only have these three markers oh now you've only got these two so as the time goes on those little proteins yep. change yep. and you become less and less likely to 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 beat it off to the yep. point where you are not in an icu and you are not in a life-threatening situation which is yeah I don't know. I, I, I disagree with the booster shots, not for the same reason that you do. Right. I don't think the vaccines are causing the variants. I think the the virus is causing the variants. I think it's going to continue to cause the variants because that's what they do. Um, I do think people need to go get at least one dose of something. Um, I think that could really uh, mitigate a lot of what we're seeing right now, especially in those poor um i hate to say it, kind of southern and heavier you know everyone where we you, come you, from you they're, do, they're you, heavy people yeah, you know, yeah. then pe heavy people don't do well yeah in, with with this virus right, they don't and yeah. indigenous people you do know yeah. that usually it usually takes a virus at least a couple of years two to three years before a new strain of a virus a new stronger strain or another strain will be will be found right yeah, that well, that would again. I don't think this virus acts in any way that is a natural way at all. I yeah. think this was again, a man-made um, created virus. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Meant yeah. to be studied yeah. and not released not, yeah, into, into the, the public. public. Yeah, it was all accidentally done. Um, and so done. now, now I agree with Pandora's you. box is open there, and we just have to deal with the fallout. I unfortunately, totally agree. I totally agree. But like I said, I had. Oh, I forgot. I was gonna. I forgot this. So my natural immunity why i was so um confident in my natural immunity so christmas time i was by myself i'm a single guy you remember those days and a friend of mine she like texted me and she's like hey what are you doing and i was like oh, not, nothing much she goes you're not with hanging out with your family or anything you don't have any plans i was like no she goes well you want to come over i was like she goes we can go get some stuff and cook and i was like yeah, fuck yeah, I was going to be one of those, I was, I was just going to play Call of Duty, you know, that's what I thought, I was like, yeah, let's do it, so I go over there, and we used to date, so it was kind of like a rekind little rekindling of an old romance, mm -hmm. and uh, 
we know that we're not compatible as far as you know like anything long term but we were just lone i guess kind of lonely holiday you know romance kind of thing and uh i stayed over there i went over 21st 22nd 23rd no i'm sorry what was there christmas so 22nd 23rd christmas is the 25th right yeah so i went over 23rd 24th 25th and left on the 26th and then was going to go back in a couple of days for new year's Mm -hmm. Soon as I leave, I was, she was having some, she was, thought she was getting the flu and it started telling me. And I said, well, I said, could be the Rona. I said, just tell me, keep me informed. She's just texting me. She goes, I'm not feeling very well. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I said, well, how do you feel? She goes, I'm sweaty. I said, I said, you're sweaty. Like your collar and stuff. Like she goes, Yeah. I said, it could be the Rona. And I'm like, could you got it for me? But I'm like, I haven't had it in months. No. No, no, but but that was my initial, that was my initial thought. I'm thinking, oh my God, because we'd had sex. You know what I mean? I'm like, maybe it's in my DNA. You know what I mean? I was like. Who knows? Because this virus is new, right? I was kind of weirded out. You know what I mean? Because like we hadn't, she hadn't been around anybody but me. We were together. I mean, but we did go to the grocery store and got some groceries and stuff. But uh, so I left. And then, um, yeah, she ended up going, getting a test and tested positive for coronavirus or COVID-19. I was like, well, shit, you know what I mean? And so now she's like, no, I'm just going to like, you know, qu- I've got a quarantine. So I'll be by myself for, you know, the for New Year's and everything. And I was like, I was like, bitch, I've had Corona. I'm not worried about it. I have natural antibodies. I said, because she got really sick. I said, I'll come back and I'll, I'll help you. And so I went back over there and stayed with her the whole time. And I didn't like. I didn't cordon myself off into a different room. We slept in the same bed. I took care of her. You know, I put a, I would get a wet rag and put it on her forehead and go rinse it out and, you know, helped her. I was absolutely hundred percent fine. Now I, I stayed away from even everybody in my building after I came back, I kind of quarantined myself because I I figured I might have Corona on me somehow and I didn't want to give it to somebody else, but I didn't get it again. And I know I could have been asymptomatic, but I just feel like I would have had some idea, you know yeah, what I mean? If some I, general idea. Yeah. And that's kind of a, yeah, that's kind of one of those interesting moral questions again that, you know, we've all had to face this last year. You know, you saw those horror stories of like the wife and the husband who the husband got sick. And so she quarantined in another room and then he passed away in the night. Yeah. You know, I don't know about you, but early on, you know, with my yeah, wife, yeah, yeah. she's yeah. got bad Freaking asthma. Yeah. I, there are points where I, where I will make her laugh yeah. so hard. She'll get into a wheezing fit, you know, and it's. That's, you know, it's, so I don't want her to get COVID, but right. at the same time, you know, if she were to come down with it, you know, I determined early on, I was like, I'm not, I'm not being separated. God, you know, God said in sickness and right. health, here I am. Yep. So whether we both go down with it or not, I'm not leaving this room. Yeah. You know? See with me, you know, if I hadn't had COVID, I can promise you my, my, my idea would have probably been different. I probably wouldn't have been there holding her hand, you know, trying to take care of her just because I just felt confident that, you know, that my natural antibodies would protect me from getting it again. I think that's a, I think that's a fair assumption. I think that personally, I think that if you've had COVID, particularly the early strains, I think you probably have the equivalent of one vaccination shot. I agree. I I absolutely agree. Maybe not two, but probably one. Um, and now is that going to protect you during a Delta, you know, a Delta outbreak? Well, 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 actually, well, actually. I I didn't understand what you were saying completely. No, what I believe is I believe if you've already had COVID and you had like if you got really sick from it like mm-hmm. I did, I think you you probably had one of the the a high viral load. Like I'm thinking I got mine from packages that I'd ordered from China. So yeah. I think I got it directly from China cuz I didn't wasn't getting my packages. I got them all of a sudden all at the same time. And some of them were a month late. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I had all these packages packaged, packed up. I put them out in the, in the sun for like two or three days so they could be out in the sun to disinfect them. But then I brought them in and I'll never forget. I cut into one of those packages and it had all, it had those big air pillows. I was going to say, there's kind so, of air And in as there, soon as I cut it, I cut one of those pillows and I just got this, this, and I went, oh my God, I hope they didn't have <laughs> virus in it. And sure enough, a couple of days later, I started yeah. like. I was sitting there in my chair and I was like, oh. 
Yeah. It feels so sick. Well, like I said, that, I think yeah. that was the equivalent of one vaccination. Yeah. No, really. I, no, I, th- I think if you, if you actually had COVID, I think you are probably like you've had five to six, maybe seven vaaccinations. Oh, really? Yeah. Even, even you're more way, so than like you're way more. Moderna, that's Moderna, which is the one oh, that put everybody way, on their back for you're like way, hours. Uh, you're way more immune because think of the people in Israel. Forty percent that they had were vaccinated. One percent infected was reinfections. Yeah, but that was um That's only a month ago. They were also the Pfizer, I think, and my mom actually Yeah, a lot of them were good, Pfizer. Yeah. Was a good point was like, Well was that AstraZeneca and was it Pfizer? No, it's I, Pfizer. Pfizer. Yeah, it's okay. Pfizer. So yeah, yeah, they they again yeah. I think the I think the Moderna's the, the strongest one. Winning. Yeah. The lottery. I think it's right the now. strongest one. But then when we did our music video in the Chinese restaurant, like uh, it's been three weeks ago, a month now. We had 50 BG that day. The only BG that tested positive for COVID was three Moderna vaccinated BG, and they really? all got vaccinated at different places. Interesting. Yep. And they were and they were full. Of, they had both doses. Both from doses. And I yeah. ask I ask our doctor or what is what I don't know if he's a doctor. It's the guy that does the there, testing. There, there I think is, he, he looked like a doctor because he had, guy who he is had the scrubs head person, on. And they will be a doctor. He had scrubs on and he had yeah. like the little embroidery name and a scrubs and everything. And uh, because one of my one of my PAs. Uh, I took her over to get her back to get her checked, and uh, he goes, "Okay, let me get you get your name and everything." Because she was a, a, a rush call, mm-hmm. we were short of PA, so I just called her up, and said, "Hey, you want to come PA today?" And so we rush called her in. So I took her to get her vac or uh, checked, COVID tested, and you know she's like, "I don't need it really because I'm already vaccinated." And he looked at her and he goes, "He goes, I've had." Doesn't because I just anymore. had, because no. I just had three BG that was all Moderna vaccinated that just come back positive, and she goes, "What, really? Oh my so god!" That's where that misinformation yep. has been spreading from the beginning, and I don't know, I don't know if it was CDC started or if it was just the general population just didn't look at it in the right, right. way. Because, like I said, oh well, these are ninety four percent effective. Yeah, for yeah. that strain, right? At that time, and as it gets stronger, it's going to be less. It's going to be different, less, yeah. and. So, yeah, this is it's it's unprecedented and it's, you know, not necessarily, you know, I talked to my grandpa a lot. You know, he lived through polio right. and like he served in yeah. World War Two and, you and know, he's seen all these major pandemics already. Well, and I, he, I said, you know, have you ever seen anything like this? He's like, no, no, not really. You know, even with polio, it right. really wasn't as widespread. Right. You know, if you kind of stayed out of the areas where it was, you, you know, wouldn't get you it. weren't really yeah. at risk for it. And, you know, I said, well, grandpa, I said, you know, World War Two. You know, feels like it was would have been the end of the world, though, because you didn't right. know if, you know, America was going to be J- Japan, yeah. if England was going to be speaking German. That feels much more, um, much more end of the world like than this yeah. does. I feel like there is definitely a yeah, light yeah. at the end of this tunnel. Um, my, my my idea, though, is I actually really believe that, like I said, I believe that the, the, the vaccines caused the mutations in the virus. Because if you look, the first mutation was found in India. That's where the first trials of the vaccine started was in India. The UK was the first country to approve 800,000 doses of vaccine for their citizens. It was the second country where the variant was was discovered. I absolutely believe that the, the, the vaccines caused the variants. And what I worry about is at some point the variants getting so strong that the vaccines are useless against them. Because if that happens... We're screwed. And I also believe that just like the Spanish flu, do you know how long the Spanish flu lasted? It was only like a year, wasn't two it? Two years. Yeah. After two years. But I told everybody at the beginning of this pandemic, it's going to be two years. After about two years, we're going to be good. And I damn sure believe that if they hadn't used a leaky vaccine and just set, and let everybody dealt with the original coronavirus, that's what we should have done. Nobody should have ever got vaccinated. They never should have released the vaccine. Well, because we because we wouldn't have had variants. What about the the J and J one though? Is not a leaky. No, 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 no. Up. They should have used so that one. Use that That's one. the only one they should have used because it and and it's I don't know that it's a leaky vaccine because it's using the old uh, flu technology. Yeah. But the mr the mr the the Moderna and the Pfizer I believe they're leaky vaccines, and I believe if they hadn't used those and just let everybody dealt with the original strain. We would be the tail end of all of this. It'd be over. But because they used those vaccines, they start, you know, when they started the trials of the vaccines in India? Mm, no. Well, I don't, I know there the is end, some the end of discussion last year. about yeah. when the Delta yeah. variant came out and when this, this um, COVID vaccine was being used over there. And there are some differing sources on that. 
when that exact timing came about. If, if, if you look at when they, they, if you look at all the stuff that, that says when it originated, it was in December 2020. You know, when they very first started the trials of the vaccine over there? December 2020. But the there first. also is causation is not correlation. Oh, that, though, that's true. Well. That's true. No, I, I mean, mean, that's true. You know, I, you, it like, could be a coincidence like the Wuhan lab. <laughs> I mean, that, that could be. I could be completely wrong. It could have come from a bat in a wet market. Uh, that's you know, true. God that's knows. true. We don't know. I, yeah, we don't, I know. don't but, know. But I really believe if but. we hadn't used these these leaky vaccines, that this would be over. We'd be at the tail end of the original coronavirus strain. I think it would have lasted just like the Spanish flu a couple of years. But because they used these leaky vaccines and it caused the virus to mutate, now we're going to have to contend for probably who knows how long I think that's, for years. I think that would be a good theory if it had been like, like the Spanish flu originated in animals and not in a lab. Um, because now I'm not sure this thing was ever going to go away in two years like the Spanish flu did. I'm Possibly. not sure that it didn't. Well, no, no, have I don't. Tools in I don't think it would have ever went completely away. You know? I think it would have become like the regular flu, but yeah. it would have been very, very. Uh, you know, it wouldn't have been deadly anymore. Yeah. You, it just been a worst case of the flu. I hope so. Yes, whether or not it was going to be that way or not, considering you know this gain of function that is probably occurring within yeah. it, I don't know. Because you know? the you know the. In all honesty, the people that it was killing was mostly the immune compromised. I mean, it was killing Elderly, a, it yes. was killing a healthy person here and there. But like my buddy Jerry, that was thirty nine, that died of it. He was a he was morbidly obese. He was you know he was a big guy. You know he's like a lineman. You know yeah. in college he was a big guy. There were always outliers, and of course you know the the media loves to pick up yeah. on the the outliers, like yeah. the guy from Broadway. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what his name or was. Or like a track and field star or somebody, you know. And of course, something. that does happen yeah. in, in every yeah. um, in every disease that yeah. does happen that way. But yes, it did. My one of my friends is, is his her husband's a nurse in L.A. County there. And he basically she said at the time when this first came out, who are you seeing come in with this? And he said yeah. elderly and diabetics and the obese. And Those anybody that's three. In, in, uh, anybody that's uh, immune compromised, like people with like uh, liver disease. Um, what's the other one that a lot of like Paul Abdul has it? Lupus. And, and MS, things MS, like that. MS, uh, lupus, because uh, your immune system is so weak. So, and I think that's why children were pretty much immune to it because they're getting a viral overload on a daily basis because they're picking up stuff off the floor, putting it in their mouths, and yeah. it doesn't matter what it is, you know what I mean? And children the original strain you didn't hear of any children getting sick of it but this new delta variant there's is, more oh yeah. yeah it's not nearly you know what it's not nearly you know frightening levels but it is enough that it is it's, it's a yeah. concerning statistic yeah, very, for sure very yeah as, as long but you know if children start dying that's when it's going to really flip everybody's going to flip out yeah, yeah i i mean i think there's definitely enough concern with the icu levels being the way they are um, especially like where was it? This guy just said basically your children will wait Texas in line until for another um, child to die for another child to but, die. Yeah, but that was about four or five days ago now. And you know my sister's an RN in Texas, and they're having a lot of hospitalizations, and all the hospitals are full, but nobody's dying. Good. So that's a good sign. Good. I mean they are having deaths, but again but it's the people. The level it's where the, they well were. it's the people that are immune compromised or you know that yeah. you know haven't taken very good very good care of themselves but like healthy 22 year old tech students are sick now you know in icu which is something that we didn't have before yeah anyway we could talk about that I know. we could go on forever <laughs> yeah we could go forever you know joe rogan's podcasts are like three hours so i always kind of usually keep mine to an hour but i've found that like uh if it gets flowing, well, just can, let it flow I mean, you can cut around yeah. this this is we're in hollywood oh yeah you, that's true you just that's cut true. around it yeah. fix it in post very true that's why i record them because originally i planned on doing them live and when i have somebody call in we always do it live but uh it works so much better when you can just edit them you yeah. know if there's a lull or something you know you just edit it out yeah well but, just don't make me into like some anti-vaxxer <laughs> kind of a person like i do i good. do believe I'm in the vaccines do. i'm gonna i'm gonna cut me completely out and then have I you do. in there just going these vaccines yeah. no no please don't i'm gonna do that <laughs> and send it to all of our uh all, all of, of our hollywood friends hollywood yeah sure crew friends so what are you going to be working on next? Do you know yet? I'm going to a pilot with oh, Miss Nicole Burke over there. Um, it's a oh, Hulu right. pilot called uh, Career Opportunities in Murder and Mayhem. Wow. Has she been working? 
I don't think she's been working much, has she? Yeah. Oh, she has? Yeah, she was over on Dead to Me. Okay. Um, and then they shut down because of Christina. A- no, Christina Applegate's, um, her MS uh, oh, diagnosis. Flared. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah, really? Crystal just, Applegate got. Yes. From Married with Children? Yep. Just She just came out with it. They, I knew oh, this no. about a month ago before before it became public. But yeah, she, she just got diagnosed with it. She was Jesus. showing signs um, about a year ago. Um, and just finally got the the diagnosis to hear about two weeks ago, three and weeks ago. Wasn't it Selma Blair that we worked on OJ with, dude? Didn't she? What did she get diagnosed with? MS. It was MS. Yeah. Jesus, it's so weird. Like, where's it coming from? I was wondering Something that in too. The water. Well, you know, I think you get a large enough group of people. It's not like everyone in Hollywood comes out with MS. There, you know, it's just like yeah, any but it's other... either Holly, but it's either MS or lupus. Well, it's yeah, like I think it's Paul just... Abdul has loop, but I mean, uh, Back to the Future. Uh, Michael J. Fox loop. Uh, he has MS. MS. Um, the the country singer, I can't think of what his name was, Clay something Clay. He came down with MS. It's yeah. just so weird. That's one I would not want to have. I had two cousins. My oldest uncle that I told you was my brother's wedding. That's like eighty four years old. His two was it two or three sons, Rocky and Mike. And when they were in their 40s, they were basically bed fast. And then they were dead by the time they were 50. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I do know uh, a, a lady back home who did have MS. And, yeah, she did not live yeah. um, past her f- late 40s, yeah. maybe early 50s That's the way they were. Exactly. At most, yeah. Anyway, I want to thank you so much for driving all the way. Where are you at now? We're in Burbank now. Oh, yeah. God. That's where I just came from, too. So you got a 40-mile 40 mile it's drive not, back it's not so bad when there's not you that's know, true when cars on the road traffic. you know at this point yeah, in time it's just me listening to music you know i'm down with that well i'll get this edited and get it up so you can listen to it you oh, and your god. wife can run around and listen to this oh my god yeah and it's just me editing <laughs> vaccines are bad, vaccines are bad. <laughs> no <laughs> it's exactly the way well, I'm thank you make for it. having me thanks for doing it uh i'm just so I think it's so much fun just to have people that I know, you know what I mean? Yeah. That come on. Well, and, and differing opinions, yeah. I think, is like I said, I think that's so important in today's in today's world where we just don't cut each other out because we think completely right. different than the other person. You may have your beliefs, like the leaky vaccines. Right. That's not my belief. Right. But that doesn't mean we can't have can't a discussion exactly. about it, you know? How, how are you? I know all of my family in Texas are super conservative. How are all your family? Because I know you're a Nebraska girl, so you're, it's basically... It's, pretty close to saying yeah it's kind of split kind of down Is the it? middle you know my family are educators mm-hmm. so they tend to be kind of more, more uh, liberal more just kind of i would say middle left right. let's put it that way gotcha um kind of where i used to be mid- yeah, yeah middle <laughs> left and and so they definitely all got their vaccines right away yeah. um but also it was because it was grandpa you know yeah you, yeah you, everybody, nev- nobody wanted, nobody nobody wanted, wanted to kill grandpa a world war yeah. ii veteran yeah. who's, you know what i mean like that's nobody not. wanted to be responsible for that i can't so. blame them yeah, i mean i absolutely can't blame blame her anybody anyway guys that is going to do it for this episode of the american nomad podcast i want to thank you guys so much for joining us if you enjoyed the episode be sure to uh click that thumbs up button it doesn't cost you anything and it helps us in the youtube algorithm if you really enjoyed the episode hit that subscribe button again that won't cost you anything and that's going to do it for this episode and we will see you the next one thank you for listening to the american nomad podcast until next time keep looking up because that's where it all is Freaking gets warm in here.